Hello everybody and welcome back to Wampleville for another live session and another session working with some 3D printed figures. Again, these are figures that I printed out myself. These happen to be from the Arvalon 8 Kickstarter campaign. We've got three of them here. Uh, I'll just focus on this one for tonight, I think. Maybe we'll play around with these other ones. I think actually the bases are from Secret Weapon Miniatures. It's been a while since I messed around with these, so I thought we'll have some fun with the sci-fi bases right here. And See that reference down in the lower left-hand corner? That's actually not from the campaign, but I just I ran across it, I think on Instagram, just in an illustration page or something like that, and I thought that could be interesting. I don't know if it's necessary. Well, I'm thinking if we use red for his glow up here, and I thought of these things as maybe being some kind of either glowing green or blue. So we might actually dig out yet another fluorescent paint here. So let's get out our orange like so. I also have just a couple of the contrast paints here. And I know, let's see, where's the where is the Blood Angels red? I know that's been very interesting to use with the fluorescent yellow. Just, uh, there it is. There we go. So we'll throw this in, kind of with each of our fluorescents there. The Leviathan blue is just going to be kind of an overall sort of a glaze. We also do have our green liner, blue liner, that sort of thing. We Maybe we'll break out some of the Reaper clears. We're also going to have some of our off-whites out here. So the Maiden Flesh and the Maggot White here, these are from Reaper miniatures, you see me using these all the time. All the time. The idea is you combine those with some of the, right here, your contrast paints, and you get this really interesting sort of semi-translucent look. We have our little watercolor trays out here, and as you can see, the idea is you just pour your contrast paint in there, and then, well, when you're done, you can pour it back in the jar, you could keep it in your wet palette. It doesn't spill all over the place. So, lots of good options there. An armored wolf in the house. Yes, I was hoping to be able to do at least one North America-friendly stream at this point. Now, I'm going to try and do the regular Saturday thing. We'll see how that one works out, too. So that was the Leviathan Blue there. I'm going to throw a Keelian Green into another one here, like so. And you don't need a bunch. Don't need a bunch. I'm just, again, chuck them over there. I could leave them in there. And you can actually sort of reactivate this too. I could put more contrast medium in there here. I'm just going to take a little bit of water. This is the sneak bite leather one here. You can see that basically reactivates it. Let's get a little bit more. Uh oh. We got Eeny Meenies in the house. And Eeny, oh, thank you so much, Eeny, for the subscription. Here, we'll give you a little bit of Wapelia spell brush dance. And he's not getting chased away by anything just yet. He's not getting chased away. Eventually, he will, though. Something, some, one of these guys will chase him off. Say, this is my stream, not yours. So, how have you so been doing? Say we all. Oh, look at that, and Nessie knows. Nessie knows. Well, we'll give him a... Ooh, come on. He's waiting right by that jar over there. He's saying, there's something coming. It's like, I know there's more. Uh, let's see. That was what... It's the magic dance of... And until he gets... He's going to get chased away by this guy. He's just going to say, nope, this is my stream. That's my jar. Nobody messes with my jar. Oh, maybe that's his name, my jar. Like I said, these two, maybe we'll play with them. Maybe not. But we'll just set those off to the side. Let's get some of our... Oh, let's get some blue liner out here. Like so. Let's get some green liner out here. Get some of our off-whites. Bilbo's brush, how are you doing? I'm just hoping that I... Uh, okay, I did turn up. Turn my volume on. Did I turn my volume up is the next question. Here, let's make sure... Nope, that is on the quieter side, so we're going to get that louder now. That's better. Okay. Let's get our off-whites out here. This is going to be the maggot white. 
I'll just chuck you right over there. Maiden Flesh over here. It's it could be anything. It doesn't have to be these two specific. This off white just has a little red to it. The other one has a little blue to it. Let's uh, chuck out some of our green here. Ah, I'm, I'm glad that it did. Well, we're going to have a little bit of it here. Maybe not a ton, but we'll have some of it. <laughs> There's a video that I'll be uploading later tonight with the gigantic... What is that? The Queen of Onslaught, right? There's her... That's just her base. And let's see, where's the... Where's the figure itself? It's around here somewhere. But here's just the wings. <laughs> That's just the wings, so you can imagine how friggin' huge this thing is. It's going to be a three-part three part series. Here, let's get some of this fluorescent blue out here, too. That's going to go over here. I did experiment putting this stuff through the airbrush. It actually really likes going through the airbrush. Ah, just... Uh, well, actually, were you using it on some of the Stormtroopers? Because I think you just posted a Storm... Sorry, I just posted a Stormtrooper earlier today. Or at least it uh, I just noticed it on Instagram there. Let's get our fluorescent orange. We'll just chuck this over here. So yeah, these are just the golden acrylics. I don't need a whole bunch of it. That's enough right there. I'm also going to throw a little bit of the Blood Angels red into there. Boom. So we're set up with those. I just noticed in the, the thing that I was doing, the, that video, that boy, that really... This actually is not a shabby combination right here. It makes some interesting, fabulous glazes. Ah, yes, and on another one. Let's see, so I'm sorry if I missed everybody's streams today. It was kind of a crazy one. I was busy running around editing videos, doing lots of stuff. So I didn't get to see anybody's streams today, which was a bummer. We're working with our usual number eight round. Craft brushes here. Let's dive in. Leviathan blue. Oh, what the heck. A little bit of the blue liner, too. It's a little bit of that blue liner, too. Just hit the base here. Let me chuck a little bit of that sneak bite leather in there, too. Maybe even more of the blue liner. And the idea is just to have a bunch of different colors happen here. A bunch of different colors. That's got a little bit more of the Leviathan blue. I kept wanting to call it Prussian blue. <laughs> it, well, the, uh, the Worship the Craft Brush, the One True Brush. I mean, that's what it is, baby. It's all about the One True Brush. I could see there's a few little different actions going on there. Let's just hit the whatever this is. Whatever this is. These three prints right here, these are actually they're actually free. They're part of the Arvalon 8 Kickstarter. I'll throw that link up. After I do some of this here and it's got to draw Ooh. This is Oh, wow, we have a couple of places we can... We got all kinds of places we can do glowy things here. This could be really fun. This could be quite interesting here. I'm not sure if we'll... Maybe we'll do freehand on his robe. Maybe not. I'm not sure yet. But it could be interesting if that's also glowing there. These canisters, maybe, maybe not. Maybe a little bit of a glow to them. <laughs> maybe we could do red there. Kind of a greenish there, and then a blue down here. That could be an interesting three different light source. Let's give that a shot, and we'll just see what happens. So I'm going to throw a little bit of red into this, because if we're going to have some reddish glow in that area, I'll just suggest that there. Then we'll go more of a darker bluish color back here. What's going on here? What are those? I don't know what those are. <laughs> I have no idea. This is pretty much really the first time I've seen this guy. I just sort of clipped him off the spruce. I think it was last night. 
and then stuck them on some on bases. So I didn't really have a chance to explore these guys and see what they they might be. I'm just gonna do this, and ah, oh, it's a nice little dark bluish black there. So hopefully, Eni, I'm sure you've been enjoying the oil still. I saw that you were making a base for the big the big glow kitty. So that one really came out fantastic. And oh, I think you were sculpting on I don't know if it was a uh, Stegodon. I know it was a lizard man, big critter. At least I thought it was. So we've got some stuff going on back here. Whatever this is, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna throw a little bit more, maybe that snake bite layer. Here, a little, little bit of green liner in with that. Don't know why. I just uh, wanted that to be a little bit of a different color. I know it's just gonna look dark, but there's actually some differences there in the colors. We'll accent these more later. I'm hoping maybe to do a Friday kind of this time or so stream. Hopefully it may not work out that way. I never really know until it kind of happens. <laughs> so sorry I can't be more precise as we got a beef in the hole. Ah well that's good. I'm glad that you've been able to enjoy those. There. Now, I don't know if you've gotten any more of the regular oil since you got that first batch. There. Now, and I'm thinking it, I'm just going to take some of this green liner over here. Again, it's, it's all just darker for right now. It might be glowing, this area here. I don't know yet. We'll find out. All right, so you, I think you, yeah, you can see there's a little bit of see a gradation here. Now look at that reference also that's on the right hand side. That could be some interesting freehand to throw in here, or maybe a hex pattern or something like that. But we'll see. We'll see. I don't want it to just be about painting folds. You see that all the time. I always try to throw a bunch of things together in one lesson. I know some people, they just try to, okay, this is going to be object source lighting or non-metallic metal, and that's all it is. That's not really the reality of the situation. You're going to have to combine those techniques. So that's why I try to do that with these guys here. Now what? I know this while I'm letting that dry for just a second. Oh, it's Tootie Foodie. How are you doing? That's, I'm assembling it's right Saurus Old Blood. Wow, that's going to be very cool. <laughs> Mixing colors, yes, it, it's sacrilege. How dare us? How dare we do that? All right, so I'm going to just do a little Control C and let's see if it Control V puts that right there. So these three again. It's top hat guy or bowl head guy and these two. So we can just download those. What I'm really eyeing are some of the drop ships and that other stuff there. That's really what I'm in Jones in for because I don't have anything like that. That could be fun. The terrain is pretty neat too, and we got Numbskill also in the house. How are you doing? Here, let me get back to my. Come on, that's better. Now I can see what I'm doing here. I'm also going to bring up my brightness just a touch. That's better. So I think you can see you got a little bit of a greenish tint here. A little bit more of a grayish blue. And that, I don't want to say it's more like a light grayish blue, but a little bit more along those lines. So I'm thinking some kind of a diode right here on the end of this thing. We'll have those be glowing. These also glowing. Let's start to work on our... Base. We're going to take some of this blue here. We'll take some of the blue liner. And now you're seeing the contrast paint mixed with 
There we go. And they get this kind of semi-translucent middle tone color. Uh, playing with an introduction set from Georgian Oils. I like to expand my oil color range. So the intro range was a gift. Ah, okay. Now, I haven't had a chance to really try anything else besides the Windsor Newtons. It was, it's a brand that I've always used, so I just kind of went with that. There's there's other really good ones out there. Rembrandt, Scrumbacher, Gamlin. There's, there's a bunch of them. Eventually, I'll try and snag some of those other ones and see if there's any major difference that at a certain point I'm not I'm not sure there is actually they might all kind of end up being sort of similar now let's start to work on some other areas here I think now I can really see that and that is it's not 100% opaque so what's underneath there is also going to show through a little bit that's why we're doing that pre-shading because we want some of that to show through. And think also when you add stuff like this, you're also in a way, it's like a tinted flow improver or a tinted, oh, what the heck would that be? A, a glaze medium or even drying retarder because it doesn't dry as fast. It doesn't actually dry as fast. Let's see, Mal's brown coat. I've noticed that you tend to wash kind of before laying down the actual base coat. Well, actually, well, we're just talking about it right now. So if you go back, I would also suggest that you watch the the YouTube video on this. I've got a ton of YouTube videos showing this method of using the contrast paints. Basically, I am not a fan of the contrast paints. I never would have actually used them myself. But because folks in Europe have a really tough time getting the Reaper paints, just shipping alone would be a major hassle. Well, they can get the GW paints almost kind of universally anywhere. So I thought, well, let's see if the contrast paints can be a, some kind of a substitute for the clear and liner paints. And they sort of are. And you saw how I took some of the contrast paints and I started to mix them with some of these lighter more opaque paints and now you can see what's happening here I'm getting basically a semi translucent lighter tone out of this which is very handy you can see I can still almost wet blend with it here I'll take some of uh, this is some of the what is that snake bite leather right that's going to go in here. Again, it's sort of a semi-translucent color there. Ah, uh, Nessie knows that I need to try my oils again, but I keep saying that. Well, it's... I know you're... Well, you've been really rocking on the, the Star Wars stuff, so I can understand wanting to keep all that vibe going. Now, let's say if we take something like the Achillean Green over here and... We mix that with that maiden flesh. Now we've got again another semi translucent color over here. And that's going to be for the, but it's also kind of a bright color. Yeah, I'll just uh, get the rest of these guys in place and then we'll think about what else might also be glowing. I've used this to do Sky Earth non-metallic metal on a unit of Song of Ice and Fire Crossbowmen, which is hilarious, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, let's see, as a beginner, I've steered clear of contrast paints because I prefer to focus on a technique that will teach me how to achieve contrast. Like, Well, this is all about... There's more to contrast than just light and dark, and we're going to emphasize that over the course of the rest of this I just all I can suggest is kind of watching a bunch of the YouTube videos and that's where you're going to see something that goes way beyond contrast. And I know people they really focus on the light and dark, that sort of contrast. That's only one type of contrast. What you can do, what I'm doing here with these paints is a whole different type of contrast. And that's 
color contrast. So you can see already, guess what we're starting to do? We're starting to get a little bit of a glowing effect here, and because it is semi-translucent, what's underneath shows through, like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab oh, the big old figure here. So kind of really focus on, because this was actually a, more like a Volpus pink. That was your snake bite leather over there. And it was essentially, all of it was mixed was just with this. So one color, turn those other colors into all of this. Now look what happens when we go boom. So you can see there's plenty of value contrast there. You can see all the lights and darks. You can see colors in the face. But all of this is just light and dark. You can't see the difference between the greens here, the pinks over here, the more orangey flesh tones over here, the green over here. Let's bring this color back now. We bring it back. All of this, again, is all done with mixing. It's almost like oils a little bit. You can look at over here. That's that Achillean green over there. I think that was the Volpus pink, either that or the whatever, the per shyish purple or something like that mixed in there. And this freehand was actually done with the Leviathan blue because it's semi-translucent. So for the tattoo there, all of these tattoos were done with the Leviathan blue. So that's what I mean more about color contrast as opposed to just value contrast. Let's take something that was done in oils here. I'm going to do the same thing to him. Look at just his hand. Look at his hand. Look at all those different colors there. Boom. Again, you can see there's shape in his hand, but what went away? All the pinks and all the greens. We'll bring those back. There's pink, green, there's turquoise, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Look over there. I'm pointing at this, right? See where you got that bluish color right next to the brown in his smock? Let's do this again. You see a difference between light and dark but you don't see the color difference. We bring it back. Now you see a distinct difference in color there. So Contrast Paints, it's a, it's a stupid name, but then basically every single miniature company out there, if you give them 10 possible names to call their product, one being the best, 10 being the worst, they start at 45, and then they go down from there. They are just... The last people who should ever be allowed to name their own products are the companies because they will choose something silly, something that confuses people, like the clear and liner paints from Reaper. One of the reasons people don't get them is because they're confused about what the heck they are. There's also different, another type of contrast, and that's hard versus soft edges. And... I've got, I think i got a picture example, too, that'll show that. So let's start to get some. Oh, this is another advantage here. So again, the Achillean green is, well, guess what? It's semi-translucent. Look what's going to happen here on his cloak. That is semi-translucent there. It's, it's like a, call it a dry glaze. That's the best term I can, I know it's, not the greatest term in the universe, but it's kind of accurate for what it is. Wow, he only has four fingers? Yeah, he's only got four fingers. I just noticed that now. Uh, we'll leave that one go. That's good enough over there. So you can already see how that's starting to develop there. Ah, slicing this one now to print, then I'll rewatch the VOD and follow along. Well, excellent. Excellent. And I'll, I'll try to get to these other ones as soon as I can right here because this one I'm thinking, you know, that glowing interior helmet glow. Something like that could be fun, maybe. Now let's just uh, get down here and hit some of these areas with it. There. Let's lighten this up just a touch more. So all we're doing is we're taking the Achillean green. We mix it with that. I think, uh, let's see. 
That's the only, I mean we don't line with them as as he being facetious there. He's being fast. Well, I mean, you can, I guess. I just, I still, and I actually asked the person who named it that. So why liner paints? They just, it's one of those things like, I don't know, I gotta name it something. You, you have a dartboard with a bunch of names on it. You throw a dart at it and whatever it hits, that's the name of the product, pretty much. Just like the clear paints. Okay. In no way, shape, or form are these paints clear. They're just pure pigment. That's what it is. There's no white in any of these things. There's just, they took red pigment, yellow pigment, and that is all that's in here. Uh, let's see. Go back to this here. Doesn't take much time all of a sudden to start developing some nifty, some nifty little OSL here. Look at that. It doesn't have to be hard. I know people really sort of get trepidatious about the old object source lighting thing. There's no need to, especially when you do it as early as possible in the process. If you're practically starting with the object source lighting and if something goes sideways, well, you just you paint over it. That's it. All good. Just paint over it. No problems. No big deal. And you can see some of that contrast paint, that is still still wet in some places. I'm going to mm, go a little bit more with this. I don't want to go too far with it before I start to mess around with the other. It, it does. It happens so fast. Uh, I know. I, I'm thinking that... So say we all. Uh, Marty Mar, thank you so much. Oh, let's do that. Let's do, oof. He's going to get that. He's going to get that. Yes, I am. He's going to get that and that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's like, that's mine. And then he's just going to burn him with his. He's got way more OSL. So he can burn him with his OSL. He can shoot him with his fancy glowy crossbow, but I have a glowy brush and a glowy sword. Yes, I do. And I'm gonna get some more of this lighter color here. And I'm gonna get some more light in here. And then I'm gonna also think about knocking this back down again. Carry a little bit more of my lighter blue up there and okay let's just stop with that for right now let's not get too far with that before we start to think about well something else here now i could either use the warp lightning contrast or i could use basically the same thing or a very similar thing which is uh, this right here let's take some clear green and let's do that let's just chuck you right over here on the palette Fluorescent green, clear green, and it's not clear. It's just a very pure green pigment. There's no, they just didn't chuck any kind of white in there with it. But thank you so much for the subscription. The, the subscriptions really do make a huge difference. They really do. Or especially now, <laughs> after dealing with taxes and everything else, it's very helpful. So I'm just going to get a little bit of, you know, I'm maybe not going to have the canisters be glowing too much, but I will have that, like it's some sort of a kind of, it's some sort of power source, thinking that could be good. I'm thinking orange glow here, orange glow there, that could be interesting. And I might even have these things out here be glowing. Yeah, let's let's see. We never know until we actually give it a shot, so let's see if we can do that here. It'll have to start out pretty light and then we can darken it after if we don't like it or whatever. It'd be easy to get rid of.
So I'm just going to follow this down here. I think, yeah, that could be fun. You know, just have this go right out here. I don't think it's really going to cast any sort of a glow necessarily, but it might be interesting. Make it look uh, even more futuristic, maybe. Ah, I see that connects over here. Just get that filled in. I see there's another one here. So that starts to look more interesting. Well, looky here, we got a gridlock sis. So f we'll just kind of give you a list of people to follow. Eeny meenies and Nessie knows, of course. And now we add a third person to the to follow list if you're not already doing so. That will be gridlock sis. Oh, and Zen for one. How are you doing? Thank you so much for the raid, gridlock. I appreciate it. We're actually working on, see that little logo right there? That's RM printable terrain and we are working with these are some actually they are free downloads right here as is the Arvalon 8 Kickstarter campaign I'm just I'm just starting on this guy here I wanted to do some object source lighting with him and have some fun maybe do some freehand too on the cloak like that that design over there possibly I just threw these on a couple of secret weapon bases threw some quick little primer on them no big deal uh, these were not too bad to print. These are set at about, I want to say, 15 degrees. Whereas other stuff that I've tried to print has been set at, oh my gosh, 45, practically freaking 90 degrees. And let's just say that there were so many failures with those other ones that I've kind of run out of resin and especially strainers and gloves. So yeah, that part of the process has uh, been delayed a, bit, a little bit. Holy smokes, we got Tim in the house Tim actually how's the tattoo shop been now that you've been open for three weeks maybe three or is it longer than three weeks I hope that's uh well and actually to uh, say uh, congratulations on the graduation as well because there was one of those too so hopefully everything is at least somewhat starting to return to well, nothing's going to be normal, but less weird. <laughs> That's all we can ask for now is less weird. How thrilling is that? Uh, it's going to be sweet June 15th. Now, okay, let's let's take some of that. Let's do the opposite thing here. We're going to take that. That's a Kelian green. Where the heck is it? So we've been using some contrast paints here, right? Uh, Males Bronco, I think there are only two freebies, and you know what you're working on. Um, I think there's three of them, because these are all in one file that was sent. And if you look at the picture, I believe all three of these were in the picture. I could be wrong, I didn't really have a chance to look at it close, but I, I do believe all three of those are part of it. So, see, look, I can take a, a little bit of water here. And we can do some translucent stuff here around the edges of this. So we're doing, yes, we're doing object source lighting, but we're also, also thinking about what kind of a surface this is. This is the this is the handy thing actually about the contrast paints is that if you mix them, like we did, we mixed. The Achillean green with this maggot white to turn it into a opaque. Oh, yeah, yeah, I posted it before, but obviously it's going to get bounced up and down the chat. So if you can post that, that would be handy. Thank you very much. I'm sure I have to do it at least three, four more times here before the evening is over. Let's get to, yeah, let's jerk in this down just a touch here. I think you can start to see these as we now go back the other way. This is almost more of a lighter glaze right here. So that's a touch lighter. 
We can go even lighter if we want to. I might break out some of the pro acrylics, like something like the Bolt Titanium White, just because that would be really nice for a nice sparkly edge on something. Here, let's hit the edge of this. Again, just trying to figure out, okay, what, what are these surfaces going to look like? And I totally reserve the right to make massive changes to this along the way. Which is always going to be the case. I'm always making changes because I'm not... I have a sort of a plan-ish. But then I'm willing to make adjustments to that plan. Here, let's get some lighter green in here see what that looks like. Ah, he's a separate down. Oh, and we got Loim in the house. And now, haha, <laughs> Kathy revealed your secret identity to me. I know who you are now. So I hope that all is well down there. And I I hope that the, the, the crazy situation with the... with those uh, little argument about... Uh, why painting is worth a little bit more than a dollar an hour. I hope that that is also somewhat resolved itself a little bit. See, we're just getting, yeah, I think I'm just going to leave that be the glow. I'm not going to have the canisters themselves. Sometimes too much glow is just too much glow. And, oh, geez, where is, where's my notes? Oh, Nessie, Nessie, yeah, look at this. Oh, I, I knew I forgot something. As we welcome in a pigeon. So as we have ourselves a new, yeah, this was the last video here. I forgot to make this graphic for the Book of Wapple here, but we have a new, a new reading there. Yes, we, we have added a new chapter to the Book of Wapple, which tends to happen when I'm working on new tutorials. Here, I'm just going to chuck in a little bit more of our brighter green here. Let's get just a touch of that here. So you can see we're starting to pile up our light sources. we got one last light source to do, though. And I'm going to grab me one of my liner brushes because, well, it's got the longer bristles, but yet it's still... So again, this is our little code right here, right? The 222 versus the 111. These are synthetics, right? It is conceivable to have a liner brush that's also, well, I don't know if they make quad zero liners, but I know I have zero. This one's a spotter, hence the shorter bristles, and hence the whole paint gets clogged right into the ferrule right away. This, not so much. But welcome in, Pigeon, and Wavy DL, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm I'm glad that it's busy, but not too busy. All right, so this is, remember we talked about this combination here, of the Blood Angels Red and our Fluorescent Orange, because they're both about the same consistency, both about the same translucency. We got Dragon Eye Miniatures in the house, too. How are you doing? Here, let's just mix these over here. We got a neat kind of a reddish orange there. Let's give him some glowing eyes. And then we'll use some of our Blood Angels Red Knot. How good. I think you can see it if I turn it upside down. This is the advantage of that mix with the contrast paints because. It's semi trans it's saving me a whole bunch of extra layers here. And this thing is underneath his hat. Who the heck's going to see it? Why would I want to spend a bazillion years screwing around doing a ton of layers there? It's not really necessary. There's not that much going on. Not many people are going to be able to see that area. Why spend forever screwing around with that? The semi-translucent paint is going to be helpful for that. So we're starting to establish, again, another, yet another color of our glow here. 
We got another spot over here, except I want this to be much brighter, so I'm going to take some of that maiden flesh there. And just really pop that right there. Uh, let me see. So I uh, oh, just uh, I, I'm glad that everybody's doing well, relatively okay. I mean, there's yeah, there's no such thing as completely okay anymore. It's it's all relative. So what I was hoping is that having that diode there would mean that I could do maybe just a little hint of light here too. And by just a little hint, I mean a little hint. We'll be toning this down as we go along. So look at that three three color light source. Is that what we're gonna have to call this when it comes time to make the, the YouTube video of it? Three color light sources? Or just multi color light sources. So look at again, this is the advantage of that liner brush look at how long the bristles are you can see they don't really deform or anything like that they just kind of stay in their shape real nice before we get okay we've established that we want those three lights over there we got angry ham in the house how are you doing yes the the new okay is uh not dead <laughs> i'm doing great i'm not dead this i'm, I'm fabulous couldn't be better. I'm not dead. Oh, let's grab a little bit of this Leviathan blue here. I'm going to go with actually a little bit of my touch of maiden flesh here. This is going to be a neutral greenish brown. Just like we did, this is the same thing we just did with the Achille in green. Well, guess what? Now we're going to do it with this color here. So it's very similar to what we did here. Speaking of which, before I forget, we should probably get some of this over here too. That's better. That's better. It's almost going to turn a little bit of a brown-ish color now that this maiden flesh is mixing in with it. Another reason I thought of doing some freehand on this part of it is because... And this can happen with the digital sculpting. It's, it's not it's here nor neither here nor there, but sometimes you have less of the undulations in the folds. It gets to be a little bit more flat. Which means it sort of makes an easier opportunity to do a little bit of freehand there and have it wrap around the the fold just a bit easier. Let's not forget his sleeve over here. Huh, yeah, the new OK. I'm vertical, not horizontal. Well, that could mean, that could mean a couple of things right there. I mean, for me, seeing the very first resin print that I made, or the very first terrain print that I make out of the Ender Three, which that is the next thing. Good grief! That's the next thing I've got to get to because I have a you know what ton of terrain that has to be printed, and that's got to be on the Ender Three. Which advantage is that it won't, it's less likely to kill you randomly and the rest of the people in your house. It's just, it's more frustrating. It's not quite so straightforward to use. Because, let me show you some other, some terrain here. This is also from RM Printed. So, so I've got actually tutorials on a lot of that terrain there, that big tower that you're seeing. Check out the YouTube channel a couple of weeks ago. I posted the tutorial for that. So again, RM Printable Terrain. And there's terrain with this Kickstarter too. So if you want to know what the terrain will look like printed, well, I mean, you can do that more ruined terrain. But there you can see a little bit more of a close-up on what that terrain looks like. So again, that is a scene from a video that I just put up on the YouTube channel not too long ago. So you can go check that out as well. This is the nice thing about, and I do this with the clear paints, I do it with the, was that, the Pro Acryl Transparents. You can see that I can just go a little bit lighter here with each layer, but they're, each one becomes a little bit more opaque with the more of that Maiden Flesh. 
so it's getting lighter not necessarily by being lighter it's just also more opaque it's more opaque and oh gee I mean as our example here this is another 3d printed miniature it was printed at 72 mil now this one is from artisan guild but again that was all done in the same kind of contrast paint method like this oh uh, let's see it says, so Gridlock says, back in my day, we all printed in a one-room house with no heat. Uh, walking to school uphill both ways. And mom would make us eat the failed prints. Well, they, they stay crunchy in milk. On the grass side of the dirt. Uh, what was that? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. As long as you're not taking a dirt nap, everything is good. Uh, we got Mike Disney in the house and Kiwis. So, folks, among the other folks you need to follow, you got to give the Mike Disney a follow because he does miniature painting he does 2d art and he was very generous in assisting me in the in the 3d printing realm uh, he was very kind to give me a just a lesson in the the supports and the rotation level of things so remember these Mike these are the these are the ones that were rotated about 15 degrees or so there were definitely less pock marks, just like, just like you forecast, as in like basically none, because well, it was all at the bottom. Just just like you were saying, it was all at the bottom there. Uh, let's see, in the snow, don't forget that uphill both ways in the snow. And Mr. Plunderfoot, how are you doing? Uh, wasn't it also covered in road apples? I mean, that's that's what the road was for me even though I lived in the city and it was only a block and a half away. Not sure where the road apples came from. Uh, let's see. If I had to eat all my failed prints, I'd weigh 800 pounds. Well, you would also probably be sort of regular, too, because they they seem to be very crunchy. As in, like, really crunchy. So I don't want this to get too too light too fast because we were hoping to do a spot of freehand on that so let's just move on to something else here let us move on to another little deal here we're going to take that oh what the heck is that leviathan blue right and we're going to mix it with the maiden flash we're going to make ourselves another what would you call it grayish color here uh, let's see, high in fiber, stay in regular. Well, I mean, if you can't have chocolate-covered raisins, at least have that. At least have that. Now, what do I want to do? I'm thinking that that so should actually be. So Thank you so much. Let's see. Grumdy. Thank you for the... Oh, wait, 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 wait. How do we forget the little dance there? The happy dance. Do, 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 do. And he says, what are you doing here? This is my stream. Get out of here. That's like, it's uh, every one of these... See, you get to see a Punch and Judy show every time someone subscribes. How's about that? Again, this is... We're going back into that mode of nice semi-translucent somewhat lighter colors here let's just uh, chuck some more lighter tones on here and maybe these will be glowing too not quite sure what color those might be maybe a reddish glow I don't know now yeah, let's get a little more of our some light tones in here. Get that away from the green. I'm thinking this is not going to be terribly light here because, well, it does have that big old sombrero over the top of it. He's always getting chased away, Pigeon. He's all, Oh, thanks, Plunderfoot. I appreciate that. Uh, raisins do not agree with me, so better stay clear of those. Yeah, that's, well, the... There is the entire story of the how the chocolate-covered raisins became illegal contraband. That, that literally illegal contraband, and just that that has to do with Kathy on one of our 
eight-hour drives up to Minnesota for Thanksgiving. Now, mind you, it's 20 degrees outside, maybe cooler. We're just cruising down the road at around 70-ish miles an hour. And all the windows are open. Because she knew I liked chocolate-covered raisins, and she thought, well, that would be a good snack for him to have along the way. And the reason the windows were open and the reason why the dog and the cat were sticking their heads out the window with their eyes watering was because raisins have consequences. And when that story was related as many times as possible, every time people see me or they know I'm coming or whatever, there's generally a one-pound bag of chocolate-covered raisins waiting for me. And especially now, for from then on in, any time we went up there to her mom and dad's house, there was a at least a one or two pound bag of chocolate-covered raisins waiting for me. And we ate them all as a family. Because the, the family that eats raisins together, well, might not stay together in the same room, I think that just might have to be, that might be part of it. Actually, geez, now, what the heck? We were just talking, hey, Mike, what was what was going to be the New Testament in the Book of Wampa? Was that going to be the 3D printing rules? I could swear it has to be. Right, Mike? The, 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 the New Testament of the Book of Wampa was going to be all kinds of wise sayings about printing like he who uh, he who prints his model at more than 15 degrees shall know only pockmarks I mean that that's a truism right there that's a truism oh let's see the whole entire bag of prunes my grandparents were dying laughing as soon as we found out why ah so it was okay so that will be the new testament of the book of wapple 3d printing yes indeed so yeah the uh <laughs> it was it was definitely an interesting scene the four of us at the kitchen table Snarfing those down every day for about a week. It's certainly made for some interesting noises. All right, we'll get the that red glow a little bit lighter now too. I'm gonna chuck a little bit of the this will be the pro acryl yellow out here because it's got a little bit of opacity to it. Uh, shall not sh not shout. He who doesn't support it will distort it. Ooh. Oh my gosh, someone has to send me that, like, in a whisper or something. Somebody's got to send me that, because we'll, we'll already start that New Testament now. And there's a little bit more of the orange in that. I think it'll be very fun, having a whole New Testament to it. Again, look at all the, the nifty terrain that's just part of this Arvalon Kickstarter here. Then think of all the Lord of the Rings terrain that I'm doing. Then think of all the pirate terrain. There's just going to be so much terrain. Love me terrain. Let's see. Raisin Raisin, the magic fruit that eat enough. And yes, you will. Well, when you have the... the it lets you voice your opinion, basically. It lets you voice your opinion. Yeah, let's get a little bit more of that red glow. Not, not just his eyes, but I'm thinking maybe there's other parts of his mask too. Here, let's do some orange over here too. Right in there. Let's get that a little brighter. Why don't we? A little bit on his fingers. No, let's get that more of an orange. Don't want that to be yellow there. That's better. Just get a little bit of the 
Reddish glow there. Let's see, I guess opinions can be silent but deadly as well. That is a good one. A family with prunes is left in ruins. Yes, sirree. Uh, thou shalt learn the anatomy of your supports. I think so. Let's see what we can do here. Maybe with some sort of interesting... Now, do I do... I kind of like that circle thing right there. Now, let me just play around here real quick with something. I just, I don't know if I want to try this. So give me a second here. Oh, what do we want to do? Hexes? What are we going to do here? Just want to see if I like this shape or not, or if that's too big of a shape. That could be interesting. It, it will sort of translate here over some of these folds, I think. Let's, let's just uh, play around with this, see if this will do something interesting here. We're going to get four years of chaos. We might as well get Nurgle and Slanish out of the way, but you must shake your resin before you pour. Isn't that one of those those songs, Shake, 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 Shake Your Resin? Uh, let's see. Four years of chaos began with uh, Nurgle and the Premier No resource for those. Well, I... Actually, to me, every year is the year of... Zinch, because, hello, it's Zinch. I mean, Zinch is the thing. Who doesn't love Zinch? Zinch certainly loves Zinch. Yeah, let's just, uh... See if we like this or not. And then I might just, uh... Hit it with some glazes to knock it down. Or I might just change it and do that sort of circular stuff there. So, ah, oh, that's what, I'll, I'll do something inside each of these little ones. Okay. So there'll just be a, a little different pattern inside the patterns, maybe. Let's try that and see how that works. Let's see, corn gets a bad rap, just as planned. Uh, let's see, yeah, okay. I'm just uh, checking on the ye old chat up there, see what's going on. See what sort of tomfoolery is happening. I'm just going to throw some some darker glazes over this. I, I have to decide, do I want it to have more of a bluish tint or a reddish tint or whatever? And, oh, that's the other thing, too. Yeah, that's right. I wanted it to actually kind of dissipate a bit. So, we won't do... Eh, we'll just do a couple more of these. I'm going to go back over here. And I still... Oh, look at this. I still have that color sitting there. Just going to let me do something like this. Which is not wiping it out, it's just really fading it out. This is why I always say freehand object source lighting, do those as quick as possible, as early in the process as possible, and let that dry. We'll go over the top of that. Let's see what we can do up here. Maybe. Let's see if a glowing red sort of works up there, or if it doesn't, let's find out. Let's see, I'm going to get me some tea just to get in the groove of things. <laughs> Tom Foolery, no way. You could do like a green pattern inside the hexes. That was what I was thinking. You know, actually, yeah, well, then we'll keep that. We'll keep that idea up here, too. So let's grab a little bit of this. Mm. 
And we're going to do that here too. I think we'll just have these two shapes maybe. This one, the one next to it. Or on the other side of his, I'm not sure what that is, hat, helmet, I have no clue. I really don't know. I just want to keep it in the middle of the screen for you. And still be able to see it myself. Okay. I will go a little darker here. I'm going to take some of that green liner, some of the Leviathan blue here. I'm going to go back and add those darks. So now we've got ourselves a little hint of some kind of a freehand pattern there. But the nifty thing is it's really, really, really subdued. There's just a hint of it there. It's still there. It's not gone. But now I can... yeah. See, it's all still there. It's a suggestion of it. So what do we got going on here? Time for in the chat. Uh, hexes will add a lot of interest. Rule in the Infinity community will want to make it more sci-fi. Add hexes. So, what I was thinking was, if we just do parts of this. Not so complete, just to, again, suggestions of it here and there. Like it's sort of fading in and out. So, like that. Maybe get a little bit more of our darker green in there. That's the, the clear green, by the way. Now we can do something inside those hexes, like we've been talking about. Yeah, it's like a watercolor paint. Oh, Mr. Grinson, how are you doing? And it's Drax in the house. So, Drax, I hope that... Uh, are you going to be still working on the... I almost call it Lady of Onslaught, but or Mistress of Onslaught. So a per another person that you definitely want to consider giving that follow to is definitely Drax for your late night chilling out, doing all kinds of fun stuff. Definitely give Drax a follow too. We're just messing around with some more of these 3D printed figures here. This one, I said, uh, Ar Arvalon, Arvalon 8, that's the, that's the Kickstarter. Like, how the heck did I already forget that? Well, it's not really a surprise. Not really a big surprise. Well, that should be cool. Uh, I know I'll be filming more tutorials tonight, so I'll try and join you while I can. So here again, I've, I've got the, because I did that initial little drawing out of the freehand, I can just pick parts of it now to give some of this green. And that where the object source lighting takes over here anyways, why, why should I keep bothering to do more with that? Here, let's gonna grab me a one of my series sevens over here just give me one second there how much further down do I want this to go I can again I can still knock it down if I need to if it gets too bright 
I can still take that down some more. I think I'll have this maybe go down to the ground here. Uh, there, print the base as well. No, this is actually, it's one of my old, it's a secret weapon miniatures base. I kind of forgot about these things. I've had them for years and years and years. It, just your basic kind of resin bases. And actually, it's a set that I never painted. I've had a few other sets that I painted up, and I never actually painted this one. So I thought, well, what the heck, let's have some fun with these. I know I have a bunch of, and this is ironic, a bunch of Japanese garden-themed bases that are printed out, which is, it's pretty funny because I really don't have that many Japanese-themed miniatures to, to work with, so I'm not quite sure how that's going to work out. Thinking that I'll, ex I'm going to do these two here along the edge. Yeah, let's just do that. Who knows, maybe I'll throw some axes up here too. I might even darken things around it to make it show up more. It's all still early yet. I'm just fooling around here. And I may paint over all the freehand because I don't, maybe I don't like it. <laughs> it's all on the table right now. Oh, the angry hand. Seeing the free handed painter makes me want to try my hand at them. I just need to dig up a test figure. Well, the the easiest ones for sure are the ones that have those wide open surfaces. No doubt about it. So if you got something, well, I guess the like storm casts or whatever things that have lots of open surfaces, cloaks. Those are really good things for free hand. And of course, well, there's bases too. I mean. Here, let's uh, just grab a couple of things here. Yeah, so even just bases are really good for freehand designs and that sort of thing. It's it's flat. It's nice and flat. I mean, here's a even larger version of that pattern for a, what is that, a penitent engine base, right? Going to get me something to drink here real quick. Let's see. Ingram says, uh, can always do a fusion between figures and bases. I had actually, when I saw this guy, I had sort of entertained the possibility, actually, of doing that. I really, I kind of did, I have to say. I'm going to take some fluorescent green here. We'll mix that with our maggot white. See if we can get some brighter versions of this. And I'd like to target this here. Maybe even a little lighter. There we go. And a little lighter here. And there. And then we'll go the other way here. Let's, let's take some of our clear green. Turn this into a even more of a glaze. And this is where we'll hopefully take this down a nut. Yeah, see? Now it's starting to look like there's a little bit of... Like here, the, the glowing light effect is just a little more intense than over here. Because if it's the same equal amount everywhere, it's just going to be, ah, eh, just too much. So see, that that's the beauty of the clear green. Because it it's such just pure pigment. You can do a nice, nifty little glaze of it. I'm going to do the same thing over these these things too, where here we go. So that it's not equally as light everywhere. 
can. That is just clear grain. That's from Reaper. Could use the transparent grain too. Uh, let's see, Numskull, I would have thing fingerprints all over it by now. And let's see, Angry Amp says that can also be a pattern. Just stick uh, dwarves on Asian theme bases. They were they were universal that way. <laughs> the bigger the beard, the better. So I'm just going to take down some of this grain as we're getting a raid. Who dares enter the... Oh, it's a Nalind. Well, hello. Welcome in. Raiders, we'll just uh, let them all sort of pile in here. And, of course, if you're not already given a Lin to follow, you should definitely do that, because it's a nice, happy, mellow stream, of course. It's a big, uh, big old raid here, so let's make sure we welcome everybody in. Well, thank you so much for the raid. I hope that you had a great stream there. Hopefully you were working on some fun stuff and you were able to get things done. I know sometimes trying to get things done on a stream with the very active chat and stuff is not always the easiest thing to do. We're working on some 3D printed miniatures here. So we can see, there's a couple, these are actually, all three of these are free to download right now. And we're just experimenting with some object source lighting and doing some fun stuff like that. Oh, <laughs> she got distracted. Well, that's... I think there was... What was the saying amongst uh, uh, amongst the streamers is that the more successful the stream, the less stuff you got done just because you were... There was a wee bit of chatting going on. I think that's kind of how that works. <laughs> more chatting... Less done, but it, I mean, it does end up being fun, of course. Here, I'll get, we're also using. If you see these little watercolor dishes right here, that just there's contrast paint in there. Oh, thanks, Nolan. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So what we're doing is using those to do things like glazes, like right here. I'm actually grabbing some of the. That is some of the you know, Leviathan blue right there. This was a Keelian green over here, and we are mixing it like here. That's the one I'm pointing to. That is a Keelian green mixed with this. So it's a it's a lighter color, right? It's opaque. Uh, friends have sent to me they like to stream model pin and encourage them to paint more. It it really well that's it works that way for Kathy. Uh, social painter. That was the term we came up with. That that some people are social. Well, actually, probably most people are, I think. That they would rather actually paint amongst a group of people and sort of enjoy the company of others as they paint. It's sort of, you know, it is miniatures sometimes. Or they have parts of them that aren't the most interesting to paint, maybe. Or the projects maybe get a little bit long. And that's one way to sort of keep each other going. You sort of encourage each other, I guess. Now what I'm gonna, I'm doing here is, again, using the... That's that Leviathan blue I'm using. It is it more of a, I don't know, a traditional glaze, I suppose. And it's also helping some of the object source lighting become a little bit brighter by default. I've got a bunch of other videos using the contrast paints in this way. So this is a previous live session that we did a while. This is also another 3D printed fig. This is from Artisan Guild. That Leviathan blue that I was just using to shade the other figure, that actually was done in the tattoo here. You can see all of this, that's like Volpus pink mixed with things like this. So again, a lighter opaque color right gives you that semi translucent there's another use of a Keelian green there this is actually some snake bite leather in here mixed with uh, a lighter yellow uh, let's see discord skype voice chats uh, are fabulous for doing that and plunderfoot says like a uh, mumble and zoom uh, actually I guess at the oh uh, I believe 
Speaking of Zoom, I think that's how they're going to do the Aces of Painting that would normally take place at Gen Con. I believe that's the 24th. I, I, I got the invitation to be in that, so apparently I will be doing some some, some speed painting again after several years of not being able to, to participate in that, so that should be fun. Alright, so we're starting to see we're getting some of that darker glaze in here now. We'll do some darker glazes in there as well, but we wanted to see what else is going to happen here with some of the... Oh, some of our little hex pattern there. Let's see what we can do with that. Again, this is fluorescent green, so if you're wondering what we've been using for that, and using the golden acrylics fluorescent paint. So it is the 24th then. Okay. I'll just, uh, we'll see how that's all going to play out. Uh, I believe it would be 7 o'clock our time here. So that is central time. For those that are wondering. Now let's see if we can do a smaller interior hacks or something here for some of these and again just on some of these not on all of them just a suggestion here like that yeah let's do another one over here this and I'll probably still go over the top of this and probably take it down with some glazes too and it's only going to be at a, just a, like I said a few spots a few spots I don't want it to, to take over the whole thing here I'm trying to make it as, as thin as possible, too, as watercolory as possible. Oh, and actually, this is something, too. So, we were oil paints on the, the last stream, right? And, like, where's the other one? It's this one here, i got to still add the, the blood effects to this. So, these two things here... We've been talking about the oils and how long it takes to dry. These two were completely and totally dry in less than 12 hours. Remember, I've been saying, well, you know, give it a day or whatever, maybe 24 hours. No, these guys here, completely dry in less than 12 hours. Uh, let's see. Back with some chai tea. Uh, I, I, yeah, we got, we got Kathy some chai tea. Uh, I got boy, I haven't made her that in a long time. Maybe I should make that for tomorrow. I know Earl Grey tends to be her favorite sort of go-to tea. There was this uh, really nifty, oh, it was like a green pomegranate tea that I started to like. Or was it, ah, oh, it was either pomegranate or blueberry or both. It was one or the other. So I'm just you know, having a little bit of fun here, throwing some of these designs on. And like I said, we can bring some of these up. We can knock some of these down. Just be subtle about that. I'll probably take, like I said, some, some darker glazes over the top of this and tone some of them down even more. Let's go back into here now. Again, this is a Kelian green. Yeah, we'll put just a little bit of the opaque color in there. Again, thinking of it as a like a dry glaze. Now, let's see. This is going to be helpful when I get back to painting Infinity <coughs> and try freehanding some tech, some hexes. There was, <clears throat> I swear there was another figure that I did a bunch of hexes on, but I don't think it was, no, nah, it wasn't in a video, unfortunately. I think it was actually hexes about like that. The cloak was certainly much bigger and more open, though.
that's for sure. Now, okay, I'm doing some darker stuff on here, but I'm going to go and I'm just going to snag, I think, some of the bold titanium white. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I'm going to get me something to drink here. Let me see. I looked at the video comparing oils. Cheaper is expensive. And the thing is with the oils, the expensive oils, they don't have to be that expensive either. That is, that's what I keep trying to, to emphasize. And remember, 10 of those, 10 oil paints, 10 different colors could last you for the rest of your natural lifespan. Because, I mean, you've seen it before here. Let me, let me get this out here. I know we're doing acrylics, but so this is a set that I got four, almost four years ago. There's ten colors in it. Look at how much is left of these guys. Now, granted, I've supplemented some of these things here as Nilene goes into lurk mode. Uh, yeah, uh, has a masala chai tea. That's a uh, it's a pain to get hold of. Well, this was uh, I think it's Kathy's sister gave it to her. That chai tea, but. That right there was what twenty eight bucks. Now, okay, yes, those are student grade, so called student grade, whatever. But they certainly get the job done, and you can see how long they last. And you know how much I do in the way of oil paints. I do tons of oil paints. Heck, I'd just use only oil paints, period, if I could. So now I'm just gonna get myself a couple of bright edges on these like this maybe even a few brighter spots in the interior here too if I can I think we'll yeah let's uh, go back in here and take a little bit of our look at that the Achillean green is almost uh, as bright as the fluorescent blue there uh, looking into getting the decent ones. Yeah, now I I am going to start getting some more of the what would we say elaborate colors for the oils, just because well, it's it's what I do and it's a medium that's going to take over more and more. So I might that that's it makes sense for me to start to get into some of the more I just call them exotics basically. I and mean, for you, it doesn't ever have to do that. Oh, we got Quispus working and lurking. We want to jump in and send kudos for that big fat nurgling guy from Creature Caster. Well, thank you so much. That was, I never, well, that was, I think, the third Nurgle theme miniature that I've ever painted, like ever. So I didn't quite know what to expect with it. Didn't, and actually, uh, also really looking forward to uh, doing some projects there too. With the, uh, so see now there's a little bit more of a. That has a little more of a glow to it here. See, so we'll kind of spread that out a little. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> a really big shark. Thank you so much for the follow. You know, I swear that there's, and we talked about this on the last stream. There's just been this rash of like unfollow things where Twitch just keeps unfollowing people. I'm sure there's a bunch of people that I know I follow that Twitch has probably unfollowed me just for whatever stupid reason. Don't know why. People have postulated all different kinds of reasons for that. Yeah, let's uh, get some of these lines in here too. Because we thought that was going to be fun. Here, let's uh, get this edge a little bit lighter. Let's get these. I think that will help to accentuate some appearance of this being lit by those diodes there. And I think we, oh, we can get some more. We can get some more lighting under here too. Like you do here. Let's get some on his fingers. A 
What about here too? But I think I'm gonna have all this light. I also need to have some. I'm gonna need to have some dark as well. So I'm gonna throw out a couple of darker colors here. Essentially, like a gray liner there. Combine that with a little bit of our Leviathan blue. These secret weapon bases here, they, they're not super thick as far as the they lip on the base here. But I need to get that covered up because it's sort of a distraction at this point. That helps. There we go. Just used a little bit of, well, it's the Pro Acryl Dark Neutral Gray, which also could have just been gray liner from Reaper. They're sort of interchangeable. I'm going to toss a little bit of that onto here. And to just uh, knock down some of these guys here. There we go. So it doesn't show up quite so much in some areas. Maybe a design didn't come out quite as clean as you wanted it to, so you just you cheat a little bit and you knock it down. Now, obviously, there's been some of the army painting series that have really gone nuts with the free hand. Oh, let's see. Angry Ham, going with the base colors, black and white, learn how to mix and match along the way. I feel like I'm after some time, they might be exploring the odd ones. Oh, yeah, so... Let's get to that. Ah, here you go. So the carrot... Whoops, that's not right. But, oh, look at that. If a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. A bonus reading. There you go. That's what you're looking for. So, basically every color of the rainbow and maybe some that aren't on the rainbow, all done with oils. And that is a half-sized human bust right there. Oh, let's see, I love how the approach is so much of cool. I have this on my brush right now. Where else can I put what well, it really is? Well, that's that's why we have this. If a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. It really is all about color unity. It's another reason why I like to use the just a few colors because you're kind of forced to use it everywhere, right? Now, we'll just uh, talk about freehand. This is one of my latest army painting series here. And you can see we did a wee spot of freehand there on all those different horsies. And then what we did on the horsies, we also did on the infantry. We did the bases too. And you can see here, I'll show you this one. That's even right there. Every single one of those guys having that freehand pattern on them, you can see what that adds to it. It just adds so much to it. Now let's uh, go back here to our boom right there. And I'm going to just to water this down a little bit. Maybe a little bit of snakebite leather here. It is wild to have that color back again. And we'll just make this a little darker now. So that that lighting shows up. Originally wasn't thinking about doing that. And then I thought, oh, that could be fun. Here's another way of darken down some of that light source so it's not quite so intense. Again, that's uh, basically a dry glaze. It's water, it's thin, it's semi-translucent, but it's you can see it's not splashy water. It's just, in some ways, it's kind of like doing what we do with the oil paint. It is, in some ways, very similar to that. I like it so much. Hey, I'm going to put it over here. <laughs> because it's, if it's handy as a glaze over there, it's going to be handy as a glaze right here, too. So let's just chuck this on here. Another reason I want this to be darker is that if we want that to be lighter, if you want to have light, you must have dark, and vice versa. Gonna throw a little bit of that up here too. A 
There we go. Let's get this. I think we could probably have some more lights up here too. We should do that. You know, still sticking with the, the big old brushes every so often here now too. Just cause. There's some of that fluorescent blue. We'll mix it with our that's the titanium white over there. Let's get a little bit more of that blue in here. Oh, let's see, you made up colors with this one. Still scary how much I expected to open its eyes. Yeah, that was... Remember, well, when I forgot to turn off the... Or shut down the stream, I thought I had, but it hadn't. And she would just, like, sleep in there for how many hours? <laughs> for, like, an hour or so? That was, uh, yeah, that was, that was creepy for people. But one of the, that was the Caracolila bus. That's, I, I always keep messing up the name of that. Keep wanting to call it Caracola bus, but it's, it's not. It's Caracolila, I think. At least I think that's how it is, but not, not quite sure. I'm going to also... Maybe, yeah... So it's not quite so equally bright everywhere. So I'm going to tone some of that down. Maybe even here on some of the object source lines. That's, the, that's a mix of the Achillean green and the white, which means that I can... It's a little bit easier for me to use water than to thin it down because it's got some regular paint in there. Uh, I had to had to stop watching her after a while because I really freaked her out. Uh, my mind is pretty much equated with blue and sh seashells. And boy, if, if you were to look at the original references that I was trying to find for that thing, it, it looks it looked nothing like the original references because I just it was Nautilus seashells, right? Just kind of very boring, sort of what, burnt sienna and white markings, that would have been it. And then I found these crazy seashells that are good grief. I don't even know how to describe them, but they're, they're basically like fire opals, Australian fire opals for whatever reason. And that just really, that stood out to me. I had to give that a try. Let's get some right here on the, the power conduit here. Let's get some brighter stuff going on there. And have that start to uh, have an impact on some of this, too. Oh, that's right. I was also thinking about those having some glow on them as well. Maybe. Let's see what happens if we give those kind of a reddish glow. So I'm just going to hit this here. And there, if we don't like it, we just kill it. We'll let those dry now. Go back to our little freehand patterns over here. Like we do. And just bring out a few sections of them. So like that. Just a suggestion of it here and there. And so now it's kind of as more of a ghosted look in some spots. Like it's some sort of a, I don't want to say, not a camo thing. What's the a holographic, I guess, maybe? That's it. The whole, uh, uh, what are they? The Harlequins, right? And all their, their, uh, Oh, what the heck would you call that? Their hologram little patterns that they've got all over themselves. That brings out just a little bit of it there. Again, that is a combination of the fluorescent green and a touch of the... little bit of the titanium white. Now 
have to see do I want to do anything later on some of the some of these other elements here what do I want to do with these guys they need some kind of a lighter tone I might even just glaze back in but before I do I take it the bust has some exotic oils on the she seashells that was actually the very first time that I exp uh, experimented with the fluorescent oil paints. To, it, it, the ironic thing is, one something I learned is that they don't really, at least for oils, they don't do very much as like they do with the acrylics. And I'll show you in a second here. One second, let me do a couple of things here as we try and get some of those, again, the glowing stuff brighter. So we got one of these. Oh, there's two of them here. So one of these two was done in oils, and one was done in acrylic. And the acrylic one was done with the fluorescent paints. The oil paint. This was done in oil paints. And most every time I show this to people, they're convinced that this one is the acrylic with the fluorescent instead of this one. So this one was done in acrylics with fluorescent. You can watch both of these on YouTube. And all I'm using is just phthalo green, some cadmium yellow, cadmium green, and that's it. That's all I'm using here. This was the fluorescent paint, and it just it doesn't look as intense as this. So there's just something about the oils because of, well, they're also a more translucent paint just by their nature. Uh, let's see. Scary in a good way. Spooky face, sp uh, face elf. Why am I saying face elf? Now they like their checkerboards all right. They are very avid chess players. Okay, so let's there's another 3D printed miniature. So again, this is another example. We've got our object source lighting here, right? But see how that's set up by all of these cooler colors and this is almost green right in here. So it's a nice opposition to our oranges. Now I'm gonna do the thing here where we kill the zoom. This. Now remember, we're thinking of doing a stream where we paint it entirely like this. Maybe with the accompanying piano music, I don't know, and subtitles. Like a, like the non-talkies. But you can still see there. there's a glow there. You can still see the lights and the darks. But you don't see the color contrast. You just see value contrast. As we bring this back, well, boom. There you go. There's your value contrast. I think this is, we've been messing with him long enough. Let's do that. So you can see he's he's got his lighting effects here. Even with no color. Then when you bring those back, now we start to see the different colors of object source lighting. Alright, where is my... I think this is the right one here. Now are those... I'm going to take some, again, that's the contrast. Blood Angels Red. And we're going to start to tone that down. And if I don't like it at all, I'm just going to wipe it out completely. But we're just going to darken down some of that here. Oh, let's get around the edge of this diode here also. Let's darken down some of that. All right. Maybe let's take a little bit more of that pattern and let's carry that more towards the front of his cloak here, if we can. So second hex in there. Oh, it's it's get a little bit of the hexes out here too. So a little bit of your it is all those diamond patterns, right? On the the harlequins. Not <laughs> noir. That's a film noir. That's what we're gonna call it. We're gonna call it film noir. 
either that or a miniature painting seance I'm not quite sure which calling forth that the spirit of dead paints and brushes everywhere yeah I think if we get a hint of it here it'll sort of make our object source yeah we can't have it only on there we gotta have some on this side too let's do that the emperor with text to speech is hilarious that's uh <laughs> yeah let's continue with the couple of hexes over on the front of this and I suppose as I could knock these down just like we did on the on the back too if we need to okay yeah it's ac actually that is kind of neat that is helping to accentuate some of the some of that object source lighting yeah let's but these uh, little small spotter brushes boy they really do collect they collect the nasty stuff in a hurry right into that feral no doubt about it again it's gonna start to feed out some of these hexes here let's just give it the impression of another hex over here for whatever reason another one over here doesn't it this is the beauty of it I didn't have to wrap this all the way around them because we sort of cheated sort of cheated didn't make it complete uh, let's see is a headcanon for the 40 K universe no amount of GW publication will change my mind uh, and it really fits the theme Uh, I guess oh the that's right the new the new Necrons I guess those what is that this weekend or something or later this month that's a pre-order thing I, I would like to get some of those to well continue what I did with what was that series eight or nine or something like that I'll show you guys in a second I'm just uh, having fun with a little bit of freehand right here just want to complete a couple of hexes bring this down a little further okay, I'm gonna get some more of that fluorescent green if you want some other nice like object source lighting tutorials, you got a bunch of the the Hellboy figures on the YouTube channel. Those I think every single one of them had a different kind of object source lighting on it. So there's that. There we go. See, it's starting to get to be a bunch of little points of light there. Yeah, well, it's uh, it would be really fun to do. Well, a couple of things not just the TMM with the object source lighting because I mean, there's just there's some really big guy and they're well here I'll show you some of the old words ah here we go uh, so yeah I mean these are the old I mean like old old Necrons here but it seems like their weapons are way more interesting instead of just that big blob right the big plastic tube but that's all TMM that was done with the metal medium mixed with the regular acrylic paints. So instead of those big old open tubes, I think it'll be more fun. It looks like they've got some cowlings around them or something, and they're not quite as big and obvious as that. So that should be fun. I'm definitely looking forward to that. So I, th I think we're starting to get more and more of a handle on our no freehand here let's move along maybe have a few bits and pieces of it down here yes yeah let's just uh 
Again, that's their fluorescent green. It's mixed with some of the clear green. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much, Fullery Q, for the follow. That is appreciated. Gandalf appreciates it, too. Now, I'm going to do a little bit here, uh, some cleanup stuff. We've got our... Here's our snake bite leather, sort of reconstituted a bit. Check a little bit of the titanium in there. And we'll start to... I'm just going to try to get some of that sort of greenish-gray into here at the same time as I'm solidifying some of these lines here. Again, that's the, the thing about the, the freehand, the object source lighting. If you start with it soon enough, you'll be able to really refine it, clean it up along the way instead of you do all that painting first and then you try and superimpose the the freehand or the object source lighting over the top of it. It just, you're kind of asking for trouble. One way or another, it's either going to just be a pain, you won't have any fun doing it. Uh, let's see, love me some Hellboy. Hey, don't knock the tubes. I, I still have, actually, I still have some of those ancient Necrons, believe it or not. But the thing I wanted to do is actually try out this to see can I do the same thing in oils that I did with the acrylics where I took the the metal medium mixed it with regular paints and turned those regular paints into metallic colors because I don't know if you, some of you remember the dark sword miniature but I'll bring that out in a second here I'm just uh, going to get some more of my fluorescent green and because it is translucent see, I, I need a little bit more of a gradation there. It kind of went directly from super bright to well super dark and that looked a little weird now here gonna hit that with some little bit of the green there maybe even draw a little bit of a hex here Let's see if that makes sense if a color goes somewhere it must go everywhere if a pattern goes somewhere it must go everywhere ah that uh, that's kind of neat so, there we go. It certainly makes this thing, this element, have uh, more interest to it. It's simple enough. All, all the freehand patterns in general that I do, they're not super complex patterns. They're just, they're a bunch of simple shapes put together. I, I, I know... Nessie it watched me do enough of the Baratheon stuff there and saw me basically take really simple combinations of shapes and turn them into freehand that looks way more complex than it actually really is. A mix and paint to get, yeah, don't knock the tubes. Yeah, let's just, uh, I think we'll make this even. A little bit brighter there. Do we put something in there? Some kind of... I'm just... I'm looking at that one... Uh, let's uh, put something like this here. And then something that maybe looks like some kind of writing around it. 
something like that. Yeah, I think we'll even close it off with an exterior line. Maybe we'll make that lighter. Even this too. Couple of so okay. Now it, it looks like his hat's got a little little more excitement happening with it. Uh, let's see, uh, I don't know people make advanced maps and I just tell them if you can draw a small circle in a line then you can draw a forest. Yeah, it's I, I think Well they they'll see the the finished thing and, and don't really realize that the finished thing is actually built out of a whole bunch of simple shapes. I think that's, uh, that was the, the thing that was really emphasized with this in art school, is that you're, you're breaking everything down into all of these smaller shapes, right? Just circles and squares and triangles and just the way they combine together, your eye sort of puts them together and says, it's this shape, it's this thing when it's not necessarily quite like that. But your mind thinks it is. Now let, let's start to do some, yeah, let's do some stuff over here to make this weapon have a little more shape to it as well. Okay, we still got this green glow over here. Uh, bad triangle equals a mountain, and shaky hands is the best coastline. Oh, geez, that's the other thing that I want to... Oh, Hexen Hills, that those terrain tiles, because I want to be able to basically have that map-based Lord of the Rings campaign. Boy, that's going to be very fun. Now, I'm not quite sure when that's going to happen, but I'm hoping at some point to be able to live stream games of Lord of the Rings. That would be really fun to be able to do that. It, it's going to require somehow getting a a line downstairs, basically drilling it through the floor to get downstairs where the playing area is and my terrain table. Not sure how that's going to work. The other thing I was hoping is that the when you balance the green glow and the red glow right next to each other, that sort of basically gives you a area of interest by default. And look at this. Look what's happening right there. A little bit of green glow from that, but it's going to really play off of the red that we've got there. Now I'm going to see if I can't make a few areas of my green a little bit darker now. Let's get back to that fluorescent green. Right here. Oh, my phone keeps going crazy with alerts. I don't know if those are alerts for uh, people going live or what. I, I, I would imagine, I guess, this is the time where a lot of folks in, well... North America here are going live, I suppose. Now we've added a bunch of lights and middle tones. I think we actually need to maybe add some some darks here into some of our... Here, let's uh, grab ourselves another one of our little long liner brushes here. Let's grab a little bit of our Leviathan blue, mix it with our gray here for some glazing maybe and darken down some of this and I'll go, well ironically I'll go back in and lighten some of it up but that panel is going to have a red glow to it, this has to be darker so and I'm still not convinced I necessarily want to have those 
That just might be too much right there. Well, let's see. We'll see if we can make that work still. I just need to keep making that a little bit darker then. It's like anything else, if you want to have dark, you must have light and vice versa. Can throw a little bit of dark up here too. Even if it goes over some of my my so-called lighting there. It's like little strips of light, like LED strips. Still want to eventually do some kind of cosplay thing with Warbler like that. What the heck, I'm just going to have some fun with a little bit of the fluorescent blue up here. Chuck it into these grays just just for fun. Uh, let me see. A bad triangle is a long enough drill head and a powerful enough drill, and you get there rather quickly. Do avoid water pipes, though. Well, don't have to necessarily worry about the the water pipe. It's it's the conduit. That's that's the that's actually the thing that I'm trying to avoid. I mean, if I'm willing to get a long enough, well, and that's the other thing, too, is those cord, the longer they get, the more useless they get, I guess, if that's uh, the right way to put it. Eventually, they kind of lose their effectiveness if they get too long. It's just, there's no way I'll ever be able to have the... There's just no way I'll be able to do that upstairs here, because, well... That's where all these filming areas are. I'm just doing a little bit here. This is almost making it look like that's sculpted in. Why not? <laughs> Why not do that? Okay. I'm gonna go back in here. A little bit of our That's some of our snake bite leather. A little bit of our medi uh, medium maiden flash. Let's get some lights on the sleeve here now. You know, have to have too much there. Hashtag don't care. So I want to get some of that greenish color. Up here, a little more shape in these sleeves. There's not much going on there. Let's do something. Okay, that's a little better. And what's going to happen here? So I've got to really make the choice, I think, on those, those red glowing areas. And should they actually be glowing or not? We'll make the final determination on that just after I mess around with this sleeve right here. So I, I forget what it was. Someone did say at, at one point, well, if that if you make that cable longer than such and such a distance, it's really it's almost like it's not going to be hardwired anymore. You might as well just be using Wi-Fi at that point. And... There is no Wi-Fi in the universe that's good enough to work for Twitch broadcasts or any kind of live streaming. At least none that's available to us, that's for sure. Yeah, let's get a couple of lighter highlights on the... I guess it's armor, we'll call it that. And now, I'm going to throw out a little bit more of the fluorescent orange again here. A little bit of... Yeah, I'm going to throw out some of the fluorescent yellow, too. And just have that. Boom, like that. I'll mix these guys together. Small little touch of that white in there. 
the the orange and what and the white together would just sort of turn to pink so having a little bit of the yellow in that keeps it from turning pink I imagine that you need a really long cable you can also put another uh, we we thought about that but every time we'd look into it it just seemed really confusing and you know, some people it was really easy for them to set up theirs and then for other folks it was just a complete nightmare to set them up and I just don't really have the time to deal with a nightmare of setup Yeah, I'll just get a more there. Okay, so that now we've got some brightness there. These are a little bit lighter now. Maybe even Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can't get his face down in here. These guys brighter then that's our blood angel red it's going to be mixed with our fluorescent orange and we need to yeah I think I'm going to get some more glow here it's this it's his mask here I know it's going to be hard to see with that big old hat of his just trust me we're just getting some stuff lighter down in here so that it's, it's actually making a little bit more of a glow out of that. Not even sure if I want that to still be glowing like that. Uh, maybe. Why not? So I'm doing a little bit more with the interior glow. like you do let's see I, th I do think that made a difference making those a little bit uh, brighter here let's see help brother along with it and it was a bit of work yep uh, let's see the minis coming along nicely oh thank you very much I just I don't know for I guess I would say fantasy miniatures always. I want to do the object source lighting because it, it really gives them something. But the sci-fi figures, it seems like even more, they just really benefit from it. I don't know if it's because we've trained ourselves to see it that way. Because in all the illustrations or movies or whatever that we see, it just tends to have lots of glowing things. I mean, that's like sci-fi has glowing stuff. We're almost like conditioned to believe that now. Which I, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, that's that's another thing that I needed to do was some darker red glazes in here too. Maybe even here. Get these guys back here too. Now, what about this? There's a whole lot of not much happening there. So let's make something more happen there. Even this, I know this uh, scabbard here had a bunch of lines sort of drawn in on it. I'm just going to paint this in here just so there's something on that. Going to start to get some lighter lights here. I'm also going to maybe go in with some bluish grays just to make things a little bit different here. We've got grays that are all pretty much the exact same color. Yes, they might be lighter or darker, but Still not that much different as far as color goes. So here maybe we'll just do some lines here like this. Maybe even that's 
glowing or something. I don't know. I don't know. I am going to throw in a touch of Achillean green here. Again, to just change the... Get that away from all of the very flat gray, neutral gray, to something that maybe has a little more blue in it. Hopefully that does the trick. There we go. And I also have to think about maybe a bit of reflected light in some places. It is supposed to be metal after all. And we don't really have much in the way of reflected light. I think that's going to be the next thing we really invest in here. I think some over here on this arm. Uh, oh, I need to get some green reflected over there. Wow, okay, I'm just, I was looking at this and I think, oh, oh I finally, I remembered some of these little flashlight do thingies here. So, aha, so check this out. This one is green. And, oh, what the heck, I'm just gonna, even if I turn off this one, so you can kind of see that, you know, if you're looking for how do I figure out my object source lighting? These little guys here, they're dirt cheap. Like a whole package of a hundred of them is six bucks or something. They're pennies on the dollar each. So, yeah, I think, uh, see, that hits that one canister over there. So they there's red ones. Uh, yeah, there's there's blue ones like this. So that's another way if you're looking to... I don't get a little bit of assistance there on your object source lighting. You're not quite sure what should get lighting, what shouldn't. That's uh, that's one possibility there. That, that getting the brush in there now. That's a whole other story. We need to get that green in there. Can we get that green in there? I think we just did. And what the heck, we'll let a little more green get onto that. Maybe make this a little bit lighter too. That's the fluorescent green that's mixed with our pro acryl white so that it just it gets more it gets lighter and more opaque. And when people try the, the golden acrylic fluorescent for the first time, they're definitely surprised at how it covers and doesn't cover. Because it's super translucent, and you would almost think it's not going to cover at all. And that ends up covering more than you think. Yep, any trick is a good trick, as long as it works. I don't even know, actually, what, what gave me the idea for doing that was just uh, sometimes take a little like messenger photos of our stuffed animals for Kathy. It's nighttime, it's super dark. And I just used one of those little lights just to, as a flashlight. And then I realized how that was really changing the colors on the actual stuffed animal. And I thought, well, maybe that would actually work for for people to to figure out where they should do glow on their actual figures, and it seemed to do that. There's a little more of our... Ah, so that, I just, uh, okay, that's good. I'm looking over to my right, and I see that the, I just did a, basically a YouTube version of one of the other 3D printed figures from last week. So, yay. I'm going to be uploading a couple of those this week. And like I said, to the Patreon page, I am uploading the latest. That's going to be tonight, before I finally try to get some sleep. That's going to be the next Creature Caster tutorial. Oh, you know, oh, let's, uh, let's get a little bit of our blue lighting there. What? Let's do that here. Take a little bit more of our... Fluorescent blue. Gee whiz, how did we not get any of that up here? 
there's not going to be much. I was looking to do reflected light anyways, and then I saw, oh, well, I should get more of the blue glow up there. That's the Achillean green. That's mixed with the white, too. That's going to go right there. And it is a little line. It's almost like a horizon line. Back into here, a little bit of our fluorescent blue again. Let's lighten up some of these guys. Give that another edge there so it looks more like, I don't know, glass. Or maybe something transparent. How much lighter do I make some of this down? I think we'll make uh, this part of it a little lighter. It is practically on top of the light source there. I think there we go. We've got some of our light there. Let's put some of this onto the knuckles on the guy's hand. Uh, uh, Angry Ham is going to head off to sleep, trying to get some sleep again, suspecting I got a f fling of the bubonic, was nice as always. Well, thank you very much, Angry Ham. I appreciate you stopping in, and hopefully you'll be up bright and chipper after getting some sleep and feeling good. But thanks again for keeping me company. It's always fun. It's so much more fun having company than just doing this myself even when i film the the tutorial videos it is still just me talking to myself so it's way more fun having you guys to talk to no doubt about that and get a touch of our blue underlighting here now is that eh, maybe a little bit of it's going to hit there let's see and i'll just give it a couple of indications I guess that would reach there too maybe I suppose it would all right and now we'll I'm gonna go back in with some of that's the I keep wanting to say flesh terror because I use that so much more actually than I don't really use the blood angel red contrast very much at all until these last few videos when I'm using it all the time and I can never remember that. I always kind of keep wanting to say flesh tear or red. Actually, well, so if you want to see, and I believe, yeah, I've got the pictures here. So this was uh, another one of my army painting series on the Patreon page here. And that was the same thing. I took fluorescent paint. I combined the, the lighter colors with the contrast paints, right? Did the same thing I'm doing here. Uh, Nessie has gotten used to talking to himself and answering myself. Well, yeah, it's all the voices in our heads that tell us to do stuff. And it looks like Pigeon has to head out. Uh, social, distancing move, social distancing movie. Uh, space ball, the carbonated beverage to enjoy a milk. Mel Brooks classic. Well, enjoy the enjoy the flick, and again, thanks for hanging out. It is it's always fun to have you in the house. Uh, I'll try and do I'll try and do the, at least the Saturday kind of extended long stream. That could be just a whole bunch of stuff. If I can do one Friday at this time, it would be more of an oil painting thing. So just a heads up on that. So thanks again. I'll see you on the next one. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe even, yeah, if, well, that the next stream that I do can be oils. Well, I'd like that for them almost all to be oils because love me some oils. But they can't necessarily all just be oils for various reasons. I wish they could be because I really love the oils so much. They just let you do so much with that not just the blending, but even the intensity of the accord. That is, that's been the biggest surprise of, of in the three years now that I've been using the oils. That's probably the biggest surprise 
is finding out how intense that the oil colors actually are in comparison to the acrylics. No, nobody more surprised than me. I really thought it would be the other way around because, well, what is it everybody uses oils for? They're using them for weathering. So like, yeah, you know, if that's something people use for weathering things, it, well, of course, what are they using? They're using all the earth tone oils. They're not exactly using salo blue and salo green and cadmium red. It's no wonder all the stuff looks muted because that's what they're using is all the muted colors. Now, I'm going to try and get some reflected light here on these canisters. Can't just all be the, the green light there. So that's some of that bluish gray here. Just really thinning that down a lot. Just getting myself an impression of some there. There's just a. We got plenty of dark there, which is good. But having only the dark there, that's that's not what we want. There's some of that grayish blue. I don't know if you can... Yeah, you can see it in here. So we're going to do another little series of lights on this canister. We're going to thin that down. And since it has some contrast paint in it, that will be somewhat translucent. What have we here on these panels? I think... Oh, yeah, let's get some more of the reflected light over here, too, I think. We could use some more. And then maybe a few lighter highlights. That's our titanium white there. I, I just, I don't know what these are supposed to be. They look like they, some could be grenades. Not quite sure. It's a couple of the little rivet type things and, oh, what the heck, I'll make that. Some of those a little bit lighter, too. And... A wee bit of reflected light here, too. Look at our... Freehand there. Ah, this thing. This thing's got... Oh, geez, my goodness, we need a whole bunch of, well, more shapes over here. No matter what it is, more shape is needed, and we're just going to do that right now. Looked over there, and just thinking, well, that looks awful flat. Again, yeah, these are from the Arvalon 8 Kickstarter here. While that is still wet, well, I'm going to see if I can't. Even do a little bit of wet blending on that. So there we go. See that? Didn't take very long. That just had no shape to it. Like any shape at all. And didn't have to work super hard to bring some in here. A couple of harder edges. And yeah. So that is a another form of contrast, and I think these two guys really show you that here. So these were both done in oils, actually. Yeah, so Mantic over here, Creature Caster over here. You can see the difference in our ice guy over here, where you got some really sharp, like physical sharp lines, and then you have some soft fades. That is a, that's your sharpness contrast, or, or, or your uh, soft versus hard edge. Edge contrast, we got the same thing here. Look at these. See those veins right there? You got some harder shapes there. You also have these hard lines. 
Then you got some softer lines over here. That is the same thing. Oh, we got Clickomania. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much for the file. It is appreciated. And here's another example of a G right here. So we have that hard edge right there. But then we got all these other softer edges everywhere else. So where does your eye go to? It's drawn to this. Same thing all along here. You have, and that's why we try to make like a trail of these harder harder lines here we got the same thing here softer shapes harder shapes uh, yes lady Bia, this is me trying to do a little something for our our North American folks here so these are from the Arvalon 8 Kickstarter campaign that's still going right now these actually are free downloadable files and I thought I'd just have some fun with the object source lighting on this guy. See that little picture on the lower left there? I, I saw that, and it looked like this guy, and I thought, ah, let let's, let's see if we can mess around like we did with that other guy there. And it's been pretty fun doing this one here. Been using that mix of the contrast paints and the regular paints again. So we've done that before. I am going to work this edge a little bit now same thing some of that lighter tone just like we did here on, on this crossbow thing I need to do a similar deal over here that's better so now that we got some more shape here too let's do that on the side we don't want to mess around too much with our with that green object source lighting. We're just making sure there's some sort of a value there. That's got to be something besides nothing. And nothing is really not going to work very well. We want that the eye is going to get bored with nothing really quick. There we go. That brings out that edge. It, it basically brings that edge closer to you, makes it look more like it's circular. We're, we're pushing that contrast there. So it's 11.40 a.m. Thursday here. Yeah, normally for... that. That's kind of funny because, well, obviously for me, it's normally about, what, 2.30 in the morning or so. When I'm starting my late night streams, which uh, for you is basically a supper time sort of experience. Or at least a early supper experience. For our European friends, it's more of a breakfast experience. Or for folks that live out, uh, was it not Pacific, is it Pacific time? Because you've got your Central Time, Mountain Time, Pacific Time. Then there's like the Super Duper Pacific Time or Bering Strait Time. <laughs> I think that's what I started calling it, just Bering Strait Time. And let's, yeah, that's that's another thing that needed. We've added a bunch of lights. Now I'm going to go back in here and see what happens, adding a few darks can't all just be a series of lights sometimes keep adding those lights nothing happens it means you got to go back the other way add some darks going to add some grays over here too ah 6:37 p.m. when they're doing the graveyard stream so that's uh, yep supper time Because, as always, uh, the phone is uh, set to my three time zones. Let's see if I can get to that here. So there you go. You got your London, Melbourne, and Chicago there. It, it all kind of started with the whole Aussie Rules football and needing to be able to keep track of when the Western Bulldogs might be on and Something tells me that they might have started the season back up again, and who knows, maybe they're having to stop the season again, or they're just doing it in empty stadiums. I have no idea what's happening with the Western Bulldogs right now. 
I, I just, it, it's really weird because uh, late at night I used to listen to my sports radio and now I just listen to Thunderdome, Drew, and Drax and the other late night streamers because I was getting sick and tired of hearing the same thing of what fantastical imaginary way they were going to start playing games again. And I said, nope, I ain't listening to this anymore. And that's, that's when I found my late night compadres. And I try and listen to them when I can. You got your art plushie, you got your jinxed, you got your teals, or th let's see, uh, I think uh, sometimes Burnsy will also be doing his stream late. That is Inquisitor Burnsy, I should say. I don't really get to the, some of the daytime folks. I know Sam and Brush for Hire and even Captain Madlove. And so most of the time they're doing streams when I'm busy filming things or just busy doing stuff and not able to have their streams on. I feel bad about that. Uh, let's see. Oh, geez, yeah. Actually, 2008, I believe, is when we discovered Aussie Rules Football. And unfortunately for me, I chose the Western Bulldogs as my team. Kathy chose the St. Kilda Saints, which initially was great. Not so great the last few years. And then, of course... When we saw that one episode of Miss Fisher's Mysteries, and she talked about being a Magpies fan, and it was it was all about footy. That was that's that's my favorite episode actually of all the Miss Fisher Mysteries. Of course, because it's about footy. I'm fairly certain she even put on a black and white scarf at the end of that episode. I'm going to try and get in a couple of, because there's these vents over here. I'm going to try and get some lighter, lighter stuff right at the top of these vents here. Make those stand out a little. Ah, Lady B is a magpie from way back. I mean, nobody was more, well... Pleased, but no one was more shocked than me. I think it was back in 20... Jeez, now it must be all the way back in 2016. Yeah, I think it was when the Bulldogs managed to win that premiership. I was very surprised. Ah, George is in the house. We think, we think the same about AFL. Union doesn't count. They are just nuts. Uh, Aville is playing to empty stadiums and all the Victorian are interstate. So yeah, something, I don't know. I was worried that they had started again and then had to stop again. So I just, I'm just kind of not even trying to catch it anymore. Well, it doesn't really matter because... At the, the late night hours when I used to be listening to footy, I'm doing live streams now anyways, so it kind of doesn't matter anymore. So I'm going to try and get some more light. And just, that's the snake bite leather mixed with the gray. Just taking a little bit of the white here. I don't think that's going to get hit by any of the blue object source lighting, so we won't mess with that. This definitely needs... I'm going to get uh, some kind of light up here. Should it be a... Re uh, you know what? Maybe some of that glowing red. Very subtle. Not a lot of it. But something maybe. Can you even see? I know his hat is in the way. 
2010 was that was that the oh that must have been the that was the double game against St. Kilda wasn't it where they had the drawn final and they didn't know what the heck to do and the guy gets on the loudspeaker and says well we'll see you here next Saturday and everybody in the stadium including the players on the field are just like what we can't just play another five minutes here and finish this stupid thing off. And then I do believe that Collingwood won that second match by about 100 points. And that's not an exaggeration. Uh, let's see. Uh, so they have a streaming service. Uh, I've been, basically what I would do is go to the afl.com.au and just basically listen to the games, the radio broadcast of the games, and have the game tracker on. Which is funny, because when I would show people that, they were convinced that it was a stock ticker. So I'm just taking some of that red glow here and dropping a few little, little dots of that down here onto some of this stuff. Here, let's get up maybe a little bit more of that reddish glow up here maybe I'm gonna see I'm gonna take this white here some of the yellow and really yeah I want to try and get some of the right in here make that a little more intense I just need there we go and his eyes too It's this tough balance of thinning it down so that it actually leaves a little bit of paint, but not too much. And now I've got to give him literally some kind of, I don't want to say eyebrows, but some kind of light reflecting. I think you can see it. Right there, okay. There's just some, there's some gunk that's, uh, that's the one thing, though, when you're using the fluorescent paint, sometimes on the wet palette, they will, they'll get some, they'll kind of turn into gunk a little bit. I'm going to get this other, other eyebrow right there we go. Okay. Oh, geez. Now, if you're wondering what's either the, the Friday thing, well, it could be a Friday and Saturday thing that I wanted to do with the oils, among other things. I've got a couple of these guys here. These are from Mears Miniatures, and these would be in oils because, well, they kind of look like that, that other dude, right? But I was just making this base earlier today, and I got a second one of these to make. So today is acrylics, Lady B. Anytime you see these little watercolor things out, oh, they're kind of getting pushed off to the side, but anytime you see these, that's acrylics. Those are, You'll never see those, well, for now, you'll never see those with oils. So this, again, this is a big guy here from Mears Miniatures, but we used, that's a secret weapon resin piece. That's from Gamer's Grass. This is cork. These are just random trees. These are different, uh, what would you say, uh, gravels and stuff from the Luke's APS and then I've got a second one that has a guy riding him like this so if you remember these guys that we did in the oils here so we're gonna you know be doing him so you'll be seeing those guys again let's get them out of harm's way here all right let's do some Let's do some more glazes here. Again, that's our Achillean green. A little bit of our fluorescent blue. Because it is just so translucent. A little more. There we go. Because the, the Achillean green, well, obviously it's got sort of a teal look to it. Where's my... Where did he go? Ah, here he is, red, red skull with the blue object source lighting. So this is actually up on the YouTube channel. It was a live set back when I was doing live sessions on YouTube. So we use that same 
blue on that. Yeah, the, well, the, and I have a feeling that shipping is about to get a whole lot worse. That we're just, we're, we're kind of, we're in the, well, this, this is going to get worse maybe with the shipping. And now I think we're officially in the, oh my gosh, shipping is going to get, horrendous and it's already horrendous to Australia of course and basically now every place is gonna be Australia so there's that <laughs> that's something fun to look forward to just getting in some darks here to, to get some separation on this now do I wanna yeah let's I'm gonna see if I can't get some things a little bit darker even here. So this is some of my brown liner here. I'm gonna be able to mix that in with some of the other stuff. So let me get something to drink here real quick. Oh, thanks, Lady B. Now I think I saw. I think I did. I saw pictures of the the tree. Well, tree lady, not tree man. Tree lady, that you did, and that was uh, that was looking mighty neat. I know you were you had secured some different fun products to to be able to do some add-ons to that, as far as some of the the foliage and such. We got Nikki in the house. Well, it was a raid, anyways. So, folks, well, I'm sure you're already following Hello, her. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. Kuzidan, thank you so much for the follow. Let's see. I see AB6 Scott. And, and Ku, I see you. I see you. I see all of you. Welcome in, folks. We're actually, this is still something, well, very rare and new for me. These are 3D printed miniatures that I printed out myself. It's, it's not, not the first 3D printed miniatures I've ever painted, but I actually printed these out myself. And these are from the Arvalon 8 Kickstarter that's still live right now. Uh, Avian Ethelium, how are you doing? Uh, uh, so Nikki, how did your, uh, how'd your stream go? I hope it was fun. Sorry I missed it because well, I was, I was kind of doing this already here. So these are, again, 3D printed files from the Arvalon 8 Kickstarter campaign. And I think it's still going for a couple of more days. There's so many Kickstarters now. I, I lose track. I've lost track of, well, I don't even know what day it is today. So that'll that's an indication of how I lose track of things. But there's certainly a lot of Kickstarters going on. But this one has a lot of really fun sci-fi figures. I'll throw up the, the link again in a little bit so that people can see that. What I'm just trying to do here, uh, we, we wanted to see how many light sources we could kind of jam into one figure here. Uh, let's see, a party from the sore teeth. Uh, the stream was fun. We were working on some Necrons and then a bust from Privateer Press. Is that the uh, that, that sort of classic uh, demon type lady there that has the horns and stuff. Oh, what the heck is her name? Because that's the one that I remember from Privateer Press. But th thanks for, yeah, thanks for coming in and, and joining us here. This is really interesting for me. I'm the Most of the 3D printed stuff that I've done is from Artisan Guild. So now this is printed at 72. This is the advantage of the 3D printing. I also am really looking forward to be able to print, well, I don't know, something like this guy, maybe at 72 mil like this. Ah, Sorsha. Uh, so the regular human lady, okay. And Captain Scar, yes, thanks, Nessie. That's it. But we these are actually both painted the same way. So essentially, taking things like your contrast paint here, but then combining them with opaque lighter paints like this. You see over here on the wet palette, you see these watercolor dishes here? That's got the contrast paints in it. But then outside here, you see all kinds of paint, including, where's my fluorescent paint, mixed with the contrast. So here's a good sort of a combination here. 
and I was just filming a I've been filming a three-part tutorial on a big creature caster beast and we've been doing a lot of this because these two as far as their consistency is about the same and these two together really make an interesting sort of a glazy type of a deal uh, let's see so Scott and Sorsha boy Jeez, I don't even know if I've actually seen that one. I've heard of it. I don't know if I've actually seen it. So what we're doing here now that we've got a lot of our glow established in our free hand, this is sort of that fun part where you go in and you start to maybe finalize some things. You start to pick out some smaller details here. Go in with the finer brushes. So here, this is actually some freehand that we added up here that wasn't originally there. We added this sort of almost like a holographic type of a pattern to that. That's, again, stuff that really wasn't there before. Even here, I'm going to, I think, crank out a couple of more dark colors. But we got to do something here. We got a lot of darks. We need some mid-tones. The world is crying out for more mid-tones there. I'm actually taking some of the fluorescent green, some of that Achillean green, bluish color, and I'm just going to chuck some of that over here. It's it's a random sort of middle tone. Random middle tone. Oh, Repray. So this is the Arvalon 8, and I'm just going to throw that link over here while I'm thinking about it before I forget here. Let me grab my keyboard. So it's going to be right here in the chat. And we got Mellow Mishaps. How are you doing? So there it is for you. There you go. Thanks, Mellow. I appreciate it. So actually, now the bases, these are from Secret Weapon. So I'll let me show you the other. This one kind of shows you the texture here. So speaking of people you need to follow, there's Orchrist Gaming. And we'll welcome in those raiders. Hey, Orchrist, how are you doing? Hopefully the stream was fun. I hope that went well. We're just, we've been having some fun with more 3D printed miniatures that I actually printed myself. And, and yes, I knew that 3D printing was going to be, well, potentially an ordeal. And I still haven't even used my Ender 3 yet. So I have yet to even try doing the the spool printing Ugh. not looking forward to it but i gotta do it i have to do that somehow yeah that's uh there we go yeah that's what it needs just looking a little bit on the peaked side there not a lot of in ah that's it yes who would have thought just taking some random teal color here and throwing it around would add so much extra to it. Let's see, uh, Repray, did you ever use some of the AK Snow Sparkle? Oh, I've got to get some of those. I Didn't you put those on some on your tree, Lady there, Lady B? I could swear I just saw on Instagram yesterday. Oh, look at the difference that makes. Look at that. Again, it's just it's a little bit of mid-tone teal. It's nothing fancy, nothing spectacular. Ah, it is starting to make that red, though. Yeah. A little bit of red glow in there starts to stand out more by doing this. And because it is essentially a bunch of translucent colors, like the Achillean green, the even the fluorescent green, it, it's, it's a semi-opaque... It's, that's why I've been calling them a dry glaze, basically. It's effectively a dry glaze. And we're going to do some more of that down here. Now yeah, let's get some of that over here. A little bit there, just to maybe extend some of the lighting out onto that. Oh, and actually here, another thing too. So... You can tell that I like to do just a little bit of object source lighting. So here's another 3D printed. That's, that's by Artisan Guild right there. Oh, we've got other fun stuff. We've got ourselves some some war cry here. So I love doing my object source lighting. We've got, where, where did my, uh, here he is. 
so you again this is kind of a turquoise sort of a glow here then of course we've got the big giant cheeto yeah this is a creature caster figure right here a lot of these are on my YouTube channel so you can check those out and even even here again another little bit of your kind of a, your glowing effects right actually one of those done in oils there and last but not least of course there's well there's me right Wapelia Spellbrush, that is me. And we use fluorescent green there, fluorescent orange there. And those are the... Oh, jeez, why am I spacing on the name? Those are the golden acrylics. Very fun stuff. Here, let's just uh, put some of these back here. I need... A little more of this mid to right in here I think we got kind of a yeah I think that green that's a little too much green right there not quite sure that the glow would reach down quite so far and suddenly I've misplaced a bunch of these ah there they are so these little guys right here so if you're looking to kind of gauge there's also a red one too and they're just little flashlights here let's turn off that light so if you want to get an idea of maybe where your lighting is going to hit see you shine your flashlight there it's not just where the lighting is going to hit but it even gives you a little bit of a color reference there so there's the green one and there's your blue one so again now of course, the blue light is really fun with the fluorescent paints. Spark my gun, Thank you so much for the follow, Repray. That is appreciated. Wow, look at that. Look what that does to the red fluorescent paint. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, use the AK Snow Sparkles on a base. Recommend to use PVA glue instead of varnish. Uh, varnish makes it a touch sparkly, but can be easily painted. Well, yeah, remember the uh, the water effects that we just did using the the blizzard mixed with the, oh, what was that, for the, uh, from Vallejo, the, not from Vallejo, the Liquitex Heavy Gloss Gel. So I'm going to definitely try and do something that's wintry and see if that will make me that melted snow that I want so bad. So I'm just doing a few more of these little indications of some highlights and striations on my metal there. Oh, thanks, RJ. Appreciate that. This one is... Uh, I've never really painted something quite like this guy before, so this is kind of new for me. Uh, I've painted 40K stuff, but this is... Uh, I don't know. I guess in some ways it's a little more Tau than anything else, and I really haven't painted too much in the way of Tau, so I think I've painted exactly two Tau miniatures out of all the 40k stuff that I've ever painted. Here's some more, just uh, continuing this pattern a bit. And there's more with the object source lighting. I mean, that's just... Uh, so here's a whole... another one of my army painting series done with the object source lighting. Then you can see, there we go. See some of that object source lighting on the, the Dark Sword miniatures there. And now I definitely want you to see these guys. So again, this is TMM done with... Oh, that's my terrain. Never mind. Never mind. And we're going to go right over to here. Where'd you go? There we go. Can't love me some object source lighting. Those are just Reaper Bones figures, by the way. Yes, nasty old Bones figures. Nothing fancy whatsoever. And some more object source lighting here. You can see what it does even for a whole unit. The difference that that makes. That's that same fluorescent green. Uh, actually, you can watch that on the YouTube channel as well. It's just James Wapple at YouTube. Do we have a Bill Robertson in the house? Yes, we do. 
Ah, oh, the crackle paste, you know. And that's the real heavy crackle paste that's going to let you really do some, like, you know, the GW stuff will let you do some crackle, and some of the other stuff does, too, even the green stuff world. But I, I maybe it's the Liquitex crackle paste that I saw that really gets gigantic cracks. Because I always wanted to try the thing where you do basically almost like a lava effect, right? Where you paint the... You paint some yellow first, or, you know, your yellow, orange, your your lava-type stuff, and then you sort of paint the crackle paste down there with some black, and it cracks so much that all that goody stuff shows up from underneath. Uh, let's see. I hope you're in here. got to get some Liquitex. Yeah, i got to get that. Uh, I'm going to look into the... So it is Liquitex crackle paste. All right, I will look into that. And you can never have too many tools. There's no such... Well, I guess you can if they just get repetitive, but if they can do some different things, why not? Here, we're just going to get some more of our... Let's get some more of our little highlights here, some more mid-tones. That's what it needed. It was just kind of dead gray there. It was just not much going on, and this sort of mid-tone teal right here. This is really doing the trick. It's really helping out. There are some vents here that I need to draw in without snapping that crossbow off. That is the other thing I've got to get used to also about the 3D printing resin is that it is going to be... It's brittle. I understand that not all of it is, that there's definitely different types of resin out there. Uh, let's see, it might be golden instead of liquid tax. Oh, it could be golden. Well, still an Amazon search will let us know one way or another. That's pretty much where I just get everything these days. Well, I don't even know if art stores are even open anywhere anymore. I have no idea. Here, let's just get a bit of mid-tone right into here. Three little lines of that. Maybe that's not quite so teal. I'm going to get a lighter th some light on the top of this, though. Uh, like that, yeah, okay. Let's see if I can't... A couple of things there to show off those vents. I need to do the same on this side. Probably easier for me to hit it from this angle. I think so. And... What do we... We're going to maybe take... Again, this is some of that contrast... Not flesh tear is red. It is the contrast blood angels red. We'll mix it with the fluorescent paint. We talked about that earlier. How those are kind of a real neat combination together here. And we're going to do some mid-tone glazing here. Over some of that lighting effect. So it's not quite as light as it was. Maybe these even, maybe tone down a little bit. Except this one actually needs to be brighter. So let's see if we can't do that here. That's just some of the Pro Acryl Yellow. We're going to combine it with the Fluorescent Orange. And make that just a touch lighter. I'm going to go back here with some of that red and orange glaze. Because, yes, I want it lighter. But that's a little bit too much lighting right there. That's a bit too bright. We're going to tone that down. Now, we established the lighting effects really early on. 
as in like right away it was one of the very first things we did it was the same thing with some of the free ant as we got cosplaying kitten in the house another person folks that you want to definitely give a follow to because you'll get miniature painting you'll get 2d digital art and you're also going to get cosplay because i mean who would have thought yes you get actual cosplay i got let's see the yellow the orange the green and the blue now i've i've had many other types i've got the vallejo fluorescent set i got those a long time ago when they were on clearance and never thought i'd use them and turned out i loved them these are really fantastic because they they're very thin but they really are intense they are really fun all right i'm gonna bring in a little bit more of our so this is the fluorescent blue over here fluorescent green fluorescent orange and yes indeed it is really i mean it is intense now i'm just sitting here looking around to see if i can find what uh what happened to oh maybe she's down here so here's another example of your fluorescent paints so this is a tutorial I'll get you out of the way another tutorial that I'm working on here so you can see the just how intense that is any other orange by comparison just looks basically dead like completely dead in comparison to that Right, if I, what's going to happen here? You know, that might get some of this. I'm just going to put some of this lighter red here to see if it works. Oh, thanks. Uh, it's uh, it's one that I really like. It it tends to drive people nuts because it's not the most. It's not the easiest. To, well, just the blue object source lighting is not the easiest to kind of create in the first place, and the the blue fluorescent paint is not as intense as some of the other ones, like the orange. The other orange one is like the easiest one to work with. It's It gets a little more complicated when you try and work with the blue fluorescent, that's for sure. I know folks definitely have a harder time with that. So I'm going to see if I cannot work in just a couple of lighter areas here especially where the eyes are might even let a little bit of that white get in there too that's the proacryl yellow here let's get rid of some of that extra there pop it right there Okay, just a bit more here, and and you can mix the fluorescent paint with basically anything. Okay, so let's go back to our Necrons over here. That is fluorescent paint mixed with metallic medium to create a metallic fluorescent green. I kid you not, that is metallic fluorescent green, and there it is again. So you've got your object source lighting on metallic paint. Otherwise, it's impossible. That, well, speaking of blue, there's Lady B going for, going for the blue, the sweet home Chicago. And there it is. Well, what's interesting, and I'll never forget the first time I learned that most cities not only don't they don't have their own flag, they certainly don't have their own flag, which every single bit of it symbolizes something so that basically your your two blue stripes obviously chicago river you're like michigan and then the the red stars they all one for the columbian exposition your world's fair chicago fire fort dearborn all represented but even each point of those stars represents something so the Chicago flag originally only had two stars on it. 
and and obviously that I believe the third one or the fourth star was your World's Fair in the 1930s. So see how we've got nice little almost like a horizon line being created. That's your green glow here that's working its way up that surface. Here, let's uh we're taking some of our titanium white to make that green even lighter. Get that little burr off the end of the brush. There we are. Yeah. I'm going to double down here on some of this on that little thing right here. Uh, wait a minute. There's a builder of the pyramid. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. A builder of the pyramid? Did we hear? Is that what I heard? Yes. There it is. The painting pyramid. There was the Big Bang, but then there was the painting pyramid. And that's... As you can see, that bottom level, what do we got there? Shaded base coat, non-metallic, freehand, object source lighting. So we're, we've been kind of doing all of those, right? Freehand, we did some shaded base coat, object source lighting. Well, then you start working your way up into the flesh tones, the color theory, the glazing, and what do you see on top there? You see the happy painter. Because all of these things that we did here, right? Freehand, object source lighting, this whole thing was shaded base coat. All in the non-metallic, like what we're doing here. All of that. And then, then you get into more of your color theory type stuff, which is, oh, actually, this is a better one to use right here. So this here, where we've got the greens and the pinks and the blues, all of these different colors here. Uh, this maybe is not something you're going to do right out of the bat, but once you get those... Little harmons, spark my gun, Hey, Holly Monster. See, I'm, I'm telling you, Twitch is doing the mass unfollow things. I gotta go check everybody that I've followed and see if it's unfollowed people for me, which I don't want to have happen. But look, there's there's purple right there, magenta there, green there. This is the kind of stuff that you can start to do after you've kind of gotten these four basic things down because they really do... There's, there's sort of like your four essential things, and once you've got those, you can really then move on to stuff like the color theory. I, hey, it was that way when I was doing the 2D art myself. It certainly was. I'm going to go even, because this is a metal surface right here. Let's go even a touch lighter there. Yeah touch lighter uh, let's so see uh oh so uh oh we got gift subs going on we got gift subs which means boom well, Pelis is gonna he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna catch that one he's gonna catch so this one too so he's like no these are mine I'm gonna get some of these I'm gonna chase all those bits and everything there well let's see we've got to brush, brush like or avianthum, so Zen for one, so Magnaris, and Deadbeat Artist. Well, thank you so much for all of the subs and folks. Be sure to head over to the. So say we all. Be sure to head over to the Armored Wolf Etsy page because there you're going to see some fantastic dice bags. So say we all. So say Oh, Bill Robertson, thank you so much. Oh, look at that. I think we've got a uh, Reaper. Let's see, I missed it if you said, but what do you so use say we all. for the OSL flash? I'll bring that out in a second here. I'm just trying to get a couple of... I just got a little crazy little gunk on the end of the brush there. There. So those were just on Amazon. Where the heck did they go? Comes in, like I say, I don't know, there's, maybe there's not 100, maybe there's 30 or 40. It should only cost you 3 or 4 bucks. I just got them on Amazon, and there's a billion different names to them. Oh, we got Megan in the house, and a Holly Monster. Thanks again for all of the gift subs for, for Bill and Armored Wolf. It is appreciated. Now, what about... 
down here. I'm going to get some more of the yield titanium white back out here because that's pretty much exhausted there. There's some more of it. Uh, let's see. What was that you just showed? Can I, okay, so let me see. Can I find the blue one? I hope this is the good one. Yes. So these come in actually four colors. There's a red and a white. So I'm going to turn this off. Now we got this blue glow here, right? Well, if we were to shine this light here, you can see it sort of tells you, okay, what's what's getting reached by the light? So we're shining this up here. As you can see, like, the underside of the helmet, some of the underside of that crossbow. Here's the green one. Again, you can see what that reads. Like here, we said this is a green light, so what gets reached by the green? Nice thing is that this doesn't overwhelm. It's not a giant flashlight. It's literally just a little tiny... They're like for kids' parties or something, I guess. That's that's what they're originally meant for. But for folks that have kind of a hard time determining where they want their light source to go, that could be very handy. Oh, let's see. Big Spalure, I've just started painting with oils and I've had some issues with the semi-transparent, transparent paints. Find there are times where the darker understating peeks through more than other areas. Uh, actually, well, it's... Actually, we've been using kind of a similar thing here because these are very translucent. What have we been doing? We've been mixing in them with lighter, more opaque paints like this. So you could potentially do that with the oils as well. Now, I'll just show you a couple of, couple of things here. Stuff that we did with the oils recently. Now, this one here was mostly phthalo blue, ultramarine blue. Those tend to be very translucent oil paints, right? Oh, we still got an Art of Mike Disney in the house. Now, I did add cerulean blue and, well, titanium white. So those were more opaque colors, so it turned those and made them a little bit more opaque than they would be. So painting just uh, ultramarine blue by itself, it's going to be translucent. Maybe you think of using that almost a bit more of a glazy way. Again, here you can see we've got that's that ultramarine violet right there. That's a very translucent color. All of these magentas were very translucent, but you can see we sort of did a uh, little bit of a glaze there with that. Well, our, uh, Mike Disney is everywhere. It's always Mike Disney. Mike Disney's everywhere. These reds were also kind of on the translucent side here. So what I had to do, if I wanted them to be more opaque, I had to add some kind of lighter color. So something like a cadmium red will make the, say, your alizarin crimson and those kind of colors makes them more opaque. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Well, I guess my, then while you are here, I have to ask the question, the dreaded question, does it look like Pictionary will happen tomorrow night? Because that, that's the, the world is waiting with bated breath to see if they're going to get their Pictionary. Is it you know, team, team, team Disney versus the world? Who will win? Uh, let's see, Avianthem is still in the house there. Yeah, this, this is a little bit... So here, we're taking the... That's the contrast paint. I'm just doing a little bit of a glaze over that. Think of that as something along the lines of... You take that alizarin crimson oil paint, right? Now... The, the hardest thing to master with the oils is going like we talked about is the that idea that not all oil paints are the same in fact almost every single oil paint is different than the next and Mike Disney is going to be finding that out as he messes around with his oils which uh, those are coming soon and there's going to be a a joint dual stream with Mike and myself and we're going to be painting a Fabulous 3D printed dragon. And Mike's going to use his oils and see what kind of fun that he can have with that. Oh, 
let me see. Uh, let's see, Biggs is this is helpful. Don't know anything about how oils behave yet. So yeah, now that is uh I, I'm right there with you because the 3D printing I didn't even know what questions to ask. Now, of course, uh, Mike Disney was super, super nice and super helpful and did a, a, a little one-on-one -on -one course for me, especially talking about supports and other such things. So we we definitely need... Sometimes you just, you're like, okay, what question do I even ask here? I don't even know what's going on. That was me with the printing. I had no freaking clue. I'm like, okay, this just tore off of this. Um, okay, how do I do, how do I do slicing again? Oh, that's a whole separate program. So, yeah, I had no clue. So, definitely, you know, don't feel bad about having to ask questions or anything like that. And I guess the other helpful thing, too, with the oil is just think of, right out of the gate, umbers, ochres. Those are going to be, let's see, umbers, oh yeah, even the siennas are a little bit on the translucent side. But your most opaque colors will always be the umbers and ochres. Heck, even that might be a really helpful guide. And stuff like the thalo green, the thalo blue, those are going to be super translucent. Um, stuff like... Uh, Quinacrino magenta, that's another one. What's weird though, like you said, is that those colors are very dark and very intense. So you keep thinking like, oh, okay, I should be able to do all kinds of coverage with this because look at how dark it is. Then you go to use it and you go, well, what the heck happened here? What's going on? So I can see how people get a little bit tricked by those. Oil colors can certainly be tricksy. Get myself a little bit of a neutral gray here. Who enters my domain? We got Cutthroat Cure with the raid. Thank you so much. Well, I'm pretty sure that absolutely everybody here is already following Cutthroat Cure, but if you're not, if you're not, Go give him a follow for sure. So how was the stream today? And let's see. I'm just trying to think. Because you had a couple of things that you were working on. And I know you're getting ready for your, your big paint challenge there. So hopefully you've got all the stuff. Everything is set in place for your big paint challenge. with the Oh, the tiny astronaut. <laughs> a double raid. <laughs> Uh, I, hey, I just, I'm happy to just hear my sound again. That's, uh, you could do it three more times if you want, just because I like hearing that sound. Who dares enter this domain? So right now you're entering the domain of some 3D printed miniatures. These are from the Arvalon 8 Kickstarter campaign. These are actually free files that you can download. So... Actually, uh, Mike Disney, you can try and download these and see what kind of results that you get. I'll throw the link in there real quick. Ah, oh, your oils arrive tomorrow. Well, you know you're going to have a lot of fun with those. So here, I'm going to just throw the Kickstarter link real quick in here because I think I can do that. That's going to go in the chat now. So there it is. So Mike, unless you already did that and downloaded those, you can go check those out and see what kind of printing results that you get on those. Just like we thought, there was not a lot of the little burrs and stuff. So oil paints, not sure if you've seen some of the recent ones here. These are two of the more recent oil painted figures. And that's actually interesting. These last couple of figures, they were completely dry within 12 hours. It used to take a day, day and a half. Now I've got it down to under 12 hours drying time. And the same idea that we're doing on our guy there, just mixing basically semi-translucent and opaque paints together. That's what we did on this guy. That's what we did on this guy, too. Uh, let me see. I just want to see what we're missing there. So Biggs is, uh, I think, mix the color on the palette and feel like it'll work well on the mini. But when I actually put it on, it looks unsatisfactory. 
Well, now that is, uh, Biggs, one of the things when you're using the oils, the miniature basically becomes your palette. Uh, that is, to me, that's one of the biggest advantages of the oils, and that's one of the reasons why you, A, save money on oils because you're using less of them. Look at how many paint, I call them palette miniatures. I've probably painted thousands of palette miniatures over the years. With oil paints, there's very little palette miniatures. You, you're not doing that very much. Uh, let's see, I did the same setup you sent to Joe. Let's see, I'm guessing you're not 3D printing miniatures with PLA. It has to be resin. This is the Elegoo Mars. So you can see here's a part of something else that was 3D printed. So that is your classic resin printer right there. I am going to be 3D printing resin terrain. Or not resin, the, F, uh, the FLM terrain, or FDM, sorry. Because... Well, I've been doing all these terrain tutorials, and I have many, many more to do, and people don't want to send me terrain. They'd much rather just send me the files and let me print out the terrain, especially now in this day and age of shipping. This is actually a recent tutorial. See that RM printable terrain? Same folks that did these right here. So let's get back into some darks over here. So we, we kind of went middle tones. We started to put in some lights. Now we're going we're gonna to circle back around again into some darks here. Get a little more definition. There we go. Sometimes you just have to add more darks. If, if adding more and more lights is not doing the trick, you got to go the other way around and add more darks. Uh, let's see. The colors on the... Uh, yeah, I'd really do... Uh, I just love the oils. I cannot get enough of them. This right here is just, we're doing a combination of contrast paints, fluorescent paints, and then just taking our little off-white here. And we've been using this off-white as well. We've been combining here. This is another fun combination that we've been doing. It, because they're both very similar in their consistency, viscosity, whatever you want to call it, they're both relatively transparent. So they kind of go together well, just like the, say, the clear paints did. Now what I want to do is maybe take some of the... So this was the original contrast paint. This is what I used to always use. It's the Reaper clear paints. I'm just going to chuck some of that over here. Why not? We'll thin this stuff down here. Got to mix a little bit of the fluorescent green with it. And I'm going to get a little more of our... Yeah, just bring back a little bit of our pattern here. Just a touch of it. Oh, we got Gun Mage in the house. Oh, thank you very much. This is a, uh, it's been an interesting experiment in how many light sources of different colors that we can cram onto the same miniature. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven light sources. Well, I don't know if you'll count those as individual. If you count them as individual, now we're like 10 different light sources. I mean, who, does, who doesn't like light sources? We all do. We love light sources. Yeah, we'll just get that. See how that's a nice little semi-translucent deal there. It was neat that it was sort of disappearing, but I think it disappeared a little too much. Remember how light this used to look before we had all the actual light next to it. And we'll draw this out just a bit more. And remember, this is that freehand that we established early on or right away, like right out the gate. I'm going to maybe even tone a little bit of that down. Maybe make it a little more green, a little less white. Yeah. A little more green, a little less white. Now up here, this is another 
little bit of freehand that we put on the top of this just to make it have a little more interest. What we might also do is see if we can't accentuate these lines here. Just like that. Makes it a little bit sharper too. Oh, let's see. Oh, Draco says so it looks like Teshin from Warframe. Now, take a look at that reference in the lower left-hand corner there. I just happened to... That literally just popped up on my Instagram feed for no reason at all. Is that the is that the character you're talking about? Because I'm looking at that illustration over there. That's kind of what gave me the idea for this this whole reddish thing here on his face to make it glowing. So maybe that's what that character is. Uh, let's see, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Really enjoyed those sessions. Returned the videos many times. I do have some Marvel Crisis Protocol here. Now you can tell me who the heck these guys are because I don't know. We'll just, uh, well, I know one of them is Doc, Doc Ock or something like that, but, oh, look at this. We have a few, so we'll be doing the car, but there's, uh, him, there's her, there's her, uh, there's him, and I think that's the Dr. Octopus, right? So... There's a few Marvel Crisis Protocol figures that I'll be working on here. I would say look for that towards the end of July because I've got a bunch of things I've got to get through here first. So, And I'd like to try and paint some of those in oils as well. So that's uh, what's coming up. So Crossbones, Okoye, Shuri, Baron Zemo, and Doc Ock. Okay. I think Kathy actually kind of knows who all those are. So she could tell me. I'm going to get a little bit of, yeah, dark right there. I'm looking to get uh, some sharper lines here. A couple of the lines got a little bit smushy. Yeah, you know what? That's just a little bit too much of nothing right there. I've got to do something more. We maybe going to do some of that. A little bit of weird semi-translucent turquoise, which is basically just fluorescent green and fluorescent blue and some palette sludge mixed together. Why not? Just to get that a little... Yeah, got to have something there. Just a little bit flat. Not much going on, either color-wise or value-wise. Speaking of value-wise here, let's lighten this up a touch. There's no edge right here. Uh, I think you can't even see it because of his hat. Now it's got an edge. And so does that. And that also needs a bit of an edge too. Same here. Uh, that's better. I think we did that on the other side. I just, for whatever reason, didn't do it on this side. We'll give that edge a bit more of a light. We'll do that here too. Same on this side. And if you're looking to you know, see some of those uh, sessions that we're talking about, those were on a YouTube channel back when I was still doing the YouTube Lives. So you can watch those and Actually, this is another good example. So, we haven't done this in quite a while. Let's do this now. We're going to hold him out here. We're going to take away the color, zoink, like so. so I think we can see our lighting. We can see our freehand designs. It just it looks like lights and darks. And we bring back our color slowly here. Bring it back. All of a sudden, all those different light sources emerge. Now, here's a. This is actually the very first Marvel Crisis Protocol figure that I painted. Lots of bright colors until we make it black and white. But you can still see all the form is there. You can still see the reflected light. 
there's still contrast but now we're gonna bring back color contrast little by little here boom all of those and that was done with the Reaper clear paints so clear red clear blue that sort of thing so well, yeah we'll be getting back into the Marvel Crisis protocol as well Oh, believe me, I would, uh, if I could, I would try and make every session a live session, but uh, alas, I do have to make the the tutorial videos for the Patreon page. Now we're going to go back into our fluorescent blue here. Some of our white. Yeah, mix it up with that fluorescent blue. Let's see if we can't get a little bit more light coming out of these, whatever these panels are. More of that with some of the Achillean green. Not too much. There we are. Yeah, I think now it gets a little bit lighter. It was looking a little bit dark for being a light source. Yeah, your 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 light source can't be darker than what it's illuminating. That usually doesn't translate too well. Oh, yes, as Nessie knows, it is basically, well, especially after this creature caster thing, because it's I feel like I'm adding 400 hours just with that tutorial three-part series alone. So, Lady B, I was back in April. I went to do my usual YouTube live session like I had done for years with no problems whatsoever. And actually, I was literally just painting something like this. I literally this guy and on a YouTube live. And five minutes into it, YouTube killed the live session, said this violates community standards, ended it, and that was the end of that. And I said, I am not doing any more live sessions here because, yes, you can contest it for a human review, but it's kind of too late once they've killed your live stream. The only reason I hadn't done Twitch yet was because the software that I was using, XSplit, for whatever reason, stopped working with Twitch. I could only use it for YouTube Live, and I was paying $60 to use that stupid XSplit software so I said, well, geez, I've got to get my money out of this. So I wasn't doing Twitch. But then when that happened, I just basically learned how to do Twitch, learned how to do OBS, and here we go. Little did I know that Twitch was a bazillion times more fun than YouTube Live because YouTube Live chats are pretty much dead. Yeah, uh... Well, get this, so I think it was Joshua Davis, he was doing a unlisted YouTube Live. It was him and one other person, no one else had any access to it. Not only did YouTube kill that live session, they put a strike on his channel. Now, of course, he contested it, got a human review, and they took away the strike, but it still killed the session, and that was, he was doing a class with somebody. Um, when I do the YouTube videos, you notice why there's never any colorful metaphors. You notice why there's never anything controversial. <laughs> you notice that it's just a teaching type of thing. And that's why th the vast majority of my tutorials are unlisted uh, Patreon page tutorials. Because otherwise... YouTube would be getting their grubby fingers on those and basically canceling everything. So that's why anything that's got, uh, shall we say, goodies on it is going to be an unlisted session. It's, it's not going to be public. So we're just we're creating some shadows now to make our light source look that much lighter. And the, the funny thing is, the reason why I was doing YouTube is because it was always told to me that it's the more discoverable platform. 
So I just did there, that was a little bit of the Achillean green. I'm going to take some of the Leviathan blue now and do a bit of a glaze the same way. Just a minor glaze right here. Like this. There we go. A little more here. Make it somewhat darker. So that's uh, using the contrast paint, but that's not how GW says to use Well, we don't do anything the way anybody tells us to use it here. So that is, that's why I ended up going to Twitch, and of course never having done Twitch before, I didn't realize what a huge community that there is, and how it's way... Uh, YouTube is also very much a dog eat dog. Hello. Spark my gun, John. Thank you, Gun Mage. I appreciate the file. So does Gandalf. Just like I can go even in the late night hours tonight and be in at least three or four other people's streams and just kind of hang out with them. And well, I can hang out with you guys, right? And find out what you guys are doing. Yeah, Bill says, we don't need your rules, GW. Yeah, there's uh, hashtag no rules, baby. Hashtag no rules. Well, of course, GW wants you to use, well, your entire jar of contrast paint in five minutes so that you have to get more. Because, remember, that that unit of currency is how many contrast paints does it cost to get this? That's why we love oils, because what did we calculate for the set of 10 oils here? How many contrast paints was this? I think this will get you four contrast paints, maybe, if you're lucky. Uh, yeah, they'll get you four and a half contrast paints. Here I got 10 oil paints, which will last me. Th those are four years old. They will last me at least another six or seven or eight years. And I use them every single day. A lot. It's the math, baby. Uh, let's see. The painting community on Twitch is... That is definitely super supportive, like you said. Uh, not all communities are the same on Twitch. Yeah, well, I, I would guess... What is it? The, the, the gaming community is probably super competitive. But I, I guess maybe that's just the nature of the gaming industry. Where people are... Trying to be top dog. It's like a tournament, basically. <laughs> I mean, and Twitch has its... Everything's going to have its weird things. There's there's nothing that's ever going to be 100% perfect. But I was just so freaking surprised. I did not expect... To, to see just so many people doing... I thought it was literally the same four or five people that did Twitch, and that was it. I didn't I didn't realize there was all these other folks that do it. I had no idea. And I still keep finding new folks all the time. I think actually I didn't find steep tea until geez, maybe three weeks ago. And I absolutely uh love watching a steep tea stream and I found Jinx just by accident, just happened to run a, like I think someone, oh, someone raided her, right? So now I know Jinxed and Art Plushy. So all of the late night streamers, which is great for me because being a des denizen of the night as I am. Ah, and they also get to see each other at events too. Uh, let's see what uh, YouTube loss is Twitch's gain. Well, thanks, Lady B. Yeah, I've. See, Kathy's been doing it, my goodness, maybe three years, almost three years, well, at least two, two and a half. And for me, well, I, I'd spent seven years invested in the YouTube channel. So I, I just was like, I was committed to it. And then YouTube basically kind of made the choice for me. And I said, well, all right, that's how it's going to be then that's just how it's going to be. Now I'm getting some more of my lights here. Let's, uh, 
Yeah, let's get some more lights here on the end of the crossbow, maybe. Like this. Going to get a little bit more of this or snake bite leather, maybe. And I'll just feather that out a little bit more. Less of a line and more of a shape. Ooh, that, that should be in the book of Wapple, Nessie. Less line, more shapes. Ooh, yeah. Send me that in a message there so I remember to add that. And oh yeah, during the, the latest tutorial video that I was just filming last night, or technically earlier today, see there's a new reading from the Book of Wapple there. That's going to be added. Last line, more shape. Uh, let's see, from a lot depends on the game. Really don't know that much though. Ah, uh, so they, they do, that was the thing I didn't realize. I didn't even know what a raid was until... I think Kath. Oh, that's right. Kathy got raided by Reaper or something like that, and or Sam Lens with like a hundred and something people. Because I'll never forget. It was one of my very first streams. Now, of course, it's it's long since past the VOD stage, unfortunately. But at one of my very first Twitch sessions, I got raided by. Oh, is it the? Uh, K um, I forget what his name is now. I'd, I'm sure I'd, I'd see him because I follow him. But he sent in 2,300 people. And it was like the third stream I'd ever done. And that was interesting. Uh-oh. Eeny Meeny has redeemed the Book of Wapple. But let's get a couple of these in here. Let's get a few of these in here. Let's start here. Like we've heard several times, you must have dark to show the light. Oh, and Nessie knows. Nessie knows thou shall not covet thy neighbor's faded ultramarine. And of course, stripping miniatures. The Dark Lord's bidding. And of course, think long, think wrong. That's a variation on analysis paralysis. And he who shall not work on the entire figure at once shall never know context. You'll never know context. And what do I mean? Just like here, what was the first thing we did? Object source lighting. All the different, we, we settled those three. What was the next thing we did? Was the free hand. Once we got those four elements tied together, what did we do? Yeah. We started to work on some of the more detailed stuff, but we started out whole thing all at once ah when you think you stink and boy you do stink you really do stink so faded ultramarine and of course you know there thou shalt not put sable brushes before me because for i am the lord that craft brush right nessie knows that one too oh <laughs> sure Edie. though there there's more there are definitely more of those. Oh, yes, indeed. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much for the follow, Longward TV. It is appreciated. And, of course, we have, well, the one true brush. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. The spiky bits. Hey, thanks for the follow. How are you doing? A little spiky bits action. Well, you must be very busy right now. I mean, I, I can't imagine why there's this little thing, this little tiny thing called Ninth Edition, and um, this, this little minor thing called Indomitus. I mean, it's really blips on the radar screen, I know. Oh, no problem, Eviantum. Uh oh, Long War TV has decided to enter my domain. Look out, baby. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much for the follow, LT. It is appreciated. And Big Poppy, how are you doing? 
Oh, let's see. Kilty O'Neill. Now, that's a... Spark my gun. That is a great ski, ski, uh, screen name there. Kilty O'Neill. I do like that. Oh, and Blockosaurus. Actually, that is a great Blood Bowl name right there. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun. Now, that was something my sauruses never did. They were more like uh, Fallosauruses, pretty much. Oh, look at this. We got... Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun. Boy, next level painting never even got their uh, follow or f entering my domain as we got Ozzy. Uh, and Aussie Jedi. Oh, that's another great one. Cyrix the Great and Mark John, and thank you so much for the raid. Oh, let's see. Good, Hello, good lord. Hobbits, spark my gun, well, folks, whoever is not following Next Level Painting, I'm sure that, well, you probably are. I mean, who is not following Next Hello, Level Painting? Hobbits, spark my gun, and thanks again. Oh, and Forrest Gump, thank you so much for the follow. So what we have been doing here, we've been working on some 3D printed miniatures. Hello, Hobbits, spark my gun, thanks, Mac John, so much. Uh, oh, and thanks for the subscription, Forrest Gump. And, oh, and Lord Gunther Mar. Lord Gunther Matar. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun. And Core Mechanical. Thank you so much. Yes, Spark my Gonja. So these are actually free files here that you can get from the... Arvalon. Oh, and uh, what do we got? The Jerkwater Junko. That's a, that's another. Wow, we have some fantastic screen names popping up here. So see that link that I just tossed in the chat? That's where you can load up these guys here. And I printed these out on my Ender 3. And... No, not in my Egalu Elegu Mars. Never mind. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to give him a little Wapelius dance there. Yeah. This, this is another 3D printed miniature. So this is Hello, me. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun. And ER910, thank you so much for the follow. So this is just this is me here this is a 3d printed 3d sculpted 3d printed version of me so if you want to know what i look like i mean this is what i look like every day i mean i got my little my little dragon bowl right there and yep that is me what we've been doing is taking combinations like this so contrast paint the fluorescent paint and an opaque light color and you see these little watercolor trays over here so this actually had some of the Achillean green in it. And the idea is, well, here, we'll just uh, we'll just throw some of that in here. So the idea is, you put a little bit of your Achillean green in there. That goes in your wet palette. And yes, this will stay active for days in your wet palette. The jar gets closed safely. No spilling your eight hours worth of contrast paint all over your table because that's not good. And then we mix it. I'll just show you real quick here. We'll do a quick little mix, right? So there's that Achillean green. There's some white with it. And I'm just being real hasty here, but look at that. Look at what we got there. That is all of this blue right here. That's what we did to get that. Uh, let's see, welcome to, let's see, we don't feel, yeah, definitely ask questions. It is no problem at all. I am very used to answering questions. And see how we can go in, but look at how this is, uh, see how that's kind of a semi-translucent color? The more of that Achillean green we put in there, it doesn't just get darker, it gets more translucent. So look at that. I can even smooth it out with my finger a little bit there. Here, let's do some more of that over here. We did that all in our object source lighting over here. Let's see if that's if it's too bright. Like that's just too bright. Guess what? We're gonna knock that down. It's another way of thinking about using your contrast paints, and this is one that I've, I show a lot here. This is actually on my YouTube channel, just James Wapple YouTube. 
This was all done entirely in the contrast paints mixed with those lighter colors. This tattoo stuff right here, that was basically Leviathan Blue. Why? Because it's, it's thin, it's semi-translucent, it's also dark. All of the tattoos that you see, all done with the Leviathan Blue. It's, it's another way of using the contrast paints. Oh, and by the way, you don't use very much of this when you do this method, because look, all you've got is this little thing of water. This goes away, the big batch. All you got is this little bit right here. Don't be hasty, little hobbits. Don't be hasty. That's in the Book of Wapple. Yes, it is. That is most definitely in the Book of Wapple. Little hobbits, spark my ganja. Lord Gideon, thank you so much for the follow. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Oh, look at this. Look at how nice and translucent that is. So I've got uh, another figure here that... Uh, ah, here it is. So this was done in a very similar way here with the Achillean green. I think this is another one of my YouTube videos right here. So that same idea, that semi-translucent glow. I, I like to do object source lighting. So we'll we'll show some of the new folks here. Oh, so this isn't this was done entirely in contrast paints as well with the those two lighter colors that I showed you and the fluorescent paints. We also there's uh, some of the dark sorts here, so again, object source lighting. Then as we get into this is TMM with object source lighting right here. And then we're going to get into our, right here, let's get into some of our Reaper stuff. Boom. More object source lighting. That's the fluorescent paints again. And those are just Bones miniatures. That's all they are. And as we get into these Pyromancers here, that's the same fluorescent green. Same fluorescent green. That's a whole unit of guys. So you can really see the impact that 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 object source lighting has. I just really, really enjoy it. Now I'm going to get back to establishing a couple of darks. Now here's that Leviathan blue, So, but look at this. We can use it as a dark, and because it's thin, I can get right in here. I needed a couple of really dark, boom, right there. Just that little bit of dark there. I need some over here too. Again, that's your Leviathan blue right there. Yes, well, he who is hasty with his oil blends shall know nothing but mud. Remember, it's in the Book of Wapple. Yes, sirree. And for folks that are new to the channel here, not only do I welcome you in, but uh, when we talk about oil paints, that is actually the, the material that I love the most to work with. And you can actually still see some of these VODs. So both of these are still active right now. These actually are painted in oil paints. But believe it or not, the same principles that I'm using on this guy with the contrast paint, even though it's acrylic, exact same thing. There was some glazing on here where we're mixing very intense paints like these magentas and that that cobalt violet which is normally a very translucent color we mixed it with the opaques did the exact same thing on these guys that i'm doing right now on this so you can go back and check these vods if you want they will eventually be turned into youtube videos so again i'm just james wampala on youtube easy enough to find easy enough to find go over there and I think I've already done about, oh my gosh, at least 15 of my former Twitch sessions and turned them into YouTube videos. Now all I'm doing is just, that's the same Leviathan Blue, right? Same Leviathan Blue. Just working in some darks here. There we go. I need to do the same over here. We were working in a lot of mid-tones, but... That's contrast paint. Does GW ever tell you to use contrast paint like that? I don't think so. I don't think so. And just like Bill Robertson said, hashtag no rules. 
we don't follow no GW stinking rules. Uh, actually, I think you could, Nessie. I mean, think about it. It's it's super thin. It's super dark. It'd be easier than trying to paint black on there. That's for sure. Uh, let me see. Biggs is uh, the ice elemental. Is so cool. Not to say the bulbous gentleman. Yeah, it's uh, the ice guy. I painted him once in acrylics. It took me th three times as long to paint that exact same figure in acrylics as it did in oils just because of the blending capabilities that oils allow so again for all the the new folks you know lord gideon jerkwater everybody else uh, i think uh, you might want to give those those past oil painting sessions a look see because it is it's basically transformed what i can do as far as miniature painting it's actually less expensive than your typical acrylic paints so you're saving money which is always a good thing they will last you forever and they're actually very forgiving is there a little bit of a learning curve initially if you haven't ever used them before well sure just like me i mean to 3d print this stuff believe me i've been i've been through some uh, anxious moments with with the 3D printer already for as little as I've used it. Uh, let's see. Gun Mage hasn't done his Spider-Man yet, waiting until the Green Goblin or the Web Slingers come out. Now, I'm thinking... Oh, look at this. I need to get another touch of red. Well, red-ish glow. So this is basically that... I keep wanting to say flesh terror red. That's the blood angel red. We're mixing it with the fluorescent orange here. I hope you can see it. I know it's sort of blocked by his hat, but we're just going to ever so just a couple of dots there. Just a few little dots. That's all. That got definitely too much with the white, so we did the same thing there. We just hit it with a little bit of a glaze. You can see under there. Being able to use the contrast paints under here to shade that, made that whole experience much easier, that's for sure. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun, just. Thank you so much for the follow, Jadam. It's, it's appreciated. Gandalf certainly appreciates it, too. Now we're using some of our, that's again, more of our contrast paint here. Toning this down. like you do that's a little bit too much red all the way out there even though we've got that diode right there it's a little too much going too far out towards the end of this barrel here so we're going to tone it down essentially a little bit of a glaze with our contrast paint still has a little bit of a reddish look to it but now no longer as intense i want to darken down this and and even now I'm, I could go back here and just say you know what those the red glow that I wanted to put in that those panels it was a neat idea I still don't like the way it works I could always get rid of that but to me I think that adds a little bit of interest in all of this just like the glowy stuff that we put up here adds a little more interest to the hat slash helmet whatever that's supposed to be I'm not really sure still not super sure I'm going to see if I've got some more of my snake bite leather here. Again, we got our little watercolor container. These things are just dirt cheap. We'll throw a little bit of our... Kind of, just a couple of drops. That's all it is. That's closed. Safely out of the way. And then we'll mix ourselves up some more of this lighter color here. And take a little bit of that Leviathan blue. Yes, you can mix your contrast paints together. That is, you can do that. I know GW would rather have you buy like 30 some odd colors of it instead of what I did, which was I think I got a dozen of them. The ones that most closely replicated stuff like my clear liner, clear liner paints. Yeah, that was a dozen. 
And I've never really gone past that dozen. Didn't really feel the need. There really wasn't a need, actually. We'll continue to add some more of our light ray. And that, it's, see, it's, it's semi-translucent. It's a glaze without being a glaze. It is lighter. Not opaque, though. It doesn't have to be super runny, super watery to be a glaze. Because, again, it's translucent. What's underneath will show through. And hopefully what that's doing there. See how it's a... It gives us a little more of a arch now overall to this. As much as I like this darker color out here, it's getting a little flat. We need something there. What what could go there? What could go out there? Uh, let, let's play with something here. So we are going to take that snake bite leather. Look at that. That's darn near a, a yellowish tan. It's translucent, though. And I'm just going to chuck a little bit of this over here. And see that? Look at it. Now you can see there's a little bit of tan right there. I'm going to do that over here. It, it keeps it in that same sort of family, right? Uh, first chapter one, book one. Or chapter one, first one in the Book of Wapo. What is that? The color goes somewhere. It must go everywhere, and that's what we're doing. We are starting to get that color everywhere here. We're going to get some of that down here. Yes, we are. We're even going to get some of that over here. We'll lighten it up. Mm, not that much. A little bit. There. So now all of a sudden, this panel has a little more. They're even going to put a little bit of texture on it. Why not? So now there's a little more shape there. I'm going to lighten up the edge of his robe just a bit. If I take some of the Leviathan blue in the white. Now I've got sort of a bluish gray. It's about the same lightness. But see how that's, even though it's a lighter color, look how translucent that is. See, we just sort of scumble that in there. Scumbling that in. And it is time again to do our little trick where we take away all the saturation, make it black and white, so those, you know, there, these three panels, we know that this one and this one were one color, that one was another color, they all look the same value, right? No difference in the value, the color is different. That is, this is something you can do with your phone, take pictures of your miniatures, use the phone app, kill the color, see the difference in the colors. Yellow, yellow, more of a neutral gray.